from these islands with a law and went around the world. Where sometimes the, the spirit of the surfing has been lost because of corporate involvement or guys surfing because they want to go, you know, make all this money, get famous, go on the world tour and stuff, which is not a bad deal. By the time 1976 rolled around, it was time to organize a circuit. We created the circuit and uh, called it the International Professional Surfing. It was a cooperative effort between surfers and contests to try to advance the concept of professional surfing. The IPS and professional surfing, it just brought more uh, more people here, you know, wanting to come to Hawaii and surf the Seven Mile Miracle. I can remember when we'd be surfing that guys would kick us out of the water, you know, because they're going to hold a contest. Corporate sponsors that come in and think they can just come by and uh, drop money and monopolize our culture. Because what was happening on the, the North Shore, outsiders coming here and and treading on our, our, our place and being uh, disrespectful, you know, to the locals out here, to the people out here. North Shore, was, at one time, it was running amok. We formed our club to let them know there is a people of this land. Four founders had the insight to say, no, we're not going to bow down to you guys. You guys are, you guys come into our house. This is our place. You guys either got to do it our way or don't come back. We love people coming to Hawaii and having a good time, but we definitely don't like people moving here and then telling us how to live in our land. Well, the original Hui uh, really wasn't the Hui. It was, they dubbed themselves the Black Shorts. And protest this contest. And they had the police. You know, down there. I can remember that day because it came to that point and the energy or, you know, that it was so high, it was so tense. We had to walk a tightrope uh, between accommodating them and keeping the contest alive. That's when the little head banging got to get started. Present members who value the Hui's traditions demand respect for the ocean of the island's environment, focused on the land and ocean, and for the Hawaiian culture and its traditions. Please join us for our annual Easter egg hunt and the 40th annual Independence Paddleboard Race on July 4th. <laughs> Ea imua uo mau ke ia o kaiana ikupono ea ea wali pajas moa days a mana tava kings and queens would visit all the islands and saw everything how would they feel about the changes of our land why could you just imagine if they were around and it's our concrete jungle
on the 2019 the Hui Backdoor Shootout continues here at Pipeline. Pipeline continues to produce, and we are going to continue to volley out and talk star with you, Kaipo Guerrero, along with Rocky Cannon. Out in the water, we got Team Weed Maps with Bruce Irons, Seth Moniz, Tyler Newton, and Joshua Moniz. Thank you for joining us. And um, gosh, Pipeline woke up early this morning. Didn't she? Yeah, it looked like she uh, went to bed early last night, got a good rest. You know, we talk about the morning sickness, and she likes to usually show her best around 10 a.m., 10.30, when that sun is prominently over the mountains that you just saw in your view. But this morning, she is up early and looking good right from the start, bro. I'm excited for another day of competition. Again, mahalo for all the great input. And here goes the kind. Actually, it is J-Bo. Josh Moniz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this one outside, Kaipo. Oh, Whoa. let's get a camera on this one. Rolling in. Bruce Irons with that classic style. Hooks off the top right underneath the <laughs> lip for Brucey. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> that was manly. Oh, my goodness. Look at this wave right here. Dropping in. It looks like Tyler Newton. Yeah. Sir Tyler Tiki Ted. Oh, Newt! Into the next section! Section, section! And he's going to come out! Come he's on. right there! He made that! <laughs> he made that. Good on you, Tyler. Should have snuck out the doggy door and let go, but that's okay. You made it all the way. That, that's a make, bro. You saw him reappear <laughs> out of that big section. That was unreal. I think he thought he was still in there. He was holding it all the way through gums. Tyler Newton has been putting out an outstanding performance at the 2019 the Hui Backdoor Shootout. So confirmed that we're going with the top three waves. Yeah. Tyler's got an 11.5. Yeah. A 10.5. That's right. Somewhere in the neighborhood of a nine for his third wave. Yep. That wave right there could very well replace that nine point ride. Mark my words. Tyler Newton looking pretty good, but we're not going to know till the end of the competition day today. We're going to got some replays starting with Josh Moniz. And Josh, beautiful grab, incredible positioning. He knew to aim a little high on that exit because it had that little acorn at the top. How's Brucey? Brucey just gaffing it right under the lip like he's at Rocky Point. And then Tiki Ted, oh, Newt's. Wow. Doing the Elemu drag. We Corrected ourselves on that, and okay. then uh, getting the pumps, making it all the way, and then right there, he's like, "Hey, peekaboo, I made it, <laughs> suckers!" How Seth? How Seth had back door? Oh, Just happened during the goodness. break. Drainer. Oh wow, that's gonna put Seth uh, further up the leaderboard for sure. And then his triple backwash on the inside, like had the backwash coming. There's a weird sidewash now coming from off the wall. <laughs> the misto sidewash. Uh, the evolution of the shoreline here continues because we have a lot of sand moving out throughout the afternoon yesterday, throughout the evening last night. There's a little shot of the compound. That's the judge's tower there. There's our good friends from Weed Maps are down there with their tent. Freak stores in the house with and all the support. And the Huyo Heenalu has been Laulima, many hands all helping out to make this happen. You know what, Rocky? Oh, wow. Tyler is on fire. People cannot see that, but it's a wonderful set. You should have seen there. him. No. <laughs> we'll we'll get, get, we're going to get back to that. But anyway, I, got caught I, just, over the railing. I, I just want to um, mahalo everybody who's been tuning in from all over the world. Here's a replay of uh, what just happened with Tyler Newton. Not even sure how he came out of that. Powered his way out. That was uh, really impressive. Thank you, Salt and Air Studios and the crew. You guys are killing it. Salt and Air, David, Ikaika, Bunny, and Mike on the mic. Mahalo for everything you're doing. Mahalo for everyone who's been writing in at Kaipo Girls, the Instagram. I got 170 messages yesterday. I think I got through all single one of them. I got maybe six more to return. Mahalo, Piha Puovai, my heart is full and this guy's heart is full because he is charging that was josh moniz no exit there but i just want to mahalo everybody for all the positive input all the aloha that we're getting 
Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's meaningful, and, and we feel it. It's been nothing but love, and we appreciate that very much. We've been um, Isaiah getting some messages <clears throat> as well yesterday. Look at Josh Moniz trying to send out an SOS from in the barrel right there. Needed some help getting out of that one, but the clamp was breaking hard on that end section there. Hawaiian Water Patrol will have jet ski assist once again today. And Mm. I think very appropriate. Look at this West Bender on your screen right there. This one is aiming back out to sea. And Brucey, <laughs> no grab, then grab, and then underwater. But a little bit of clamp. And once again, you can see the crashing waves here. Oh. Again, the format today, we're going to have 25-minute heats for each of the teams. We have eight teams to finish this sixth round at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Then we're gonna be crowning a champ and a winning team today. So 25 minute heats, a little bit quicker than we've seen in the past, but you know what? If the waves keep coming like this, 25 minutes is gonna be action packed. Yeah, and um, already we've seen more than a handful of attempts and uh, some great, excellent rides even by uh, shootout standards. And um, really uh, thankful and appreciative that we're able to finish this right on the last day of the waiting period. The where the swell real. cooperated, you know, and even um, just give us this extra bit of time to fit in a sixth round of the shortboard surfing. And that's, uh, you know, when you average 30 minutes per heat, that is uh, a couple of hours of surfing to try to get scores, which is uh, a great format and super fun to watch. So many great messages. Look at this beautiful morning. I want to shout out to one of the top 15 Rangas surfers in the world. He's number 12 on my list. Milby, mahalo for watching us, checking it out. Of course, the Ranga surfers are the red-headed surfers. They have their own special union. Oh, wow. And uh, Milby's number 12 on the list of right. top 15 Ranga surfers yeah, yeah, in the entire world. That's some of those um, uh, union members in our midst. Ripping North Shore day in and day no, out. Mikey Red is in the top three, boo. Oh, guaranteed. Easily. <laughs> Good stuff. Again, 25 minute heats, eight heats today. We got some action from the water yesterday that we're going to replay. That slow motion, water angle. Beautiful morning right here as we look to the west. And uh, some numbers in. 933 so, Tyler Newton. 983 <laughs> Tyler Newton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 917 for Seth Moniz. And uh, 833 for Joshua. Those are all really impressive scores oh. for the last round to make a, a, you know, a round six run at it. Weed maps yeah. might be smoking the rest of the crew right now. We'll see. As a team, man, they are putting together some big scores. Even uh, Brucey the other day able to throw some up there that were in that range. So collectively, weed maps looking good. Really good. See how As the conditions are looking really good, Malie. So calm. Nice and calm. Once again, referring to the wind calm, the waves obviously are pumping. The ocean itself could be far from calm, especially in uh, places here along the reef. This guy is not calm. He's excited. Josh mm -hmm. Moniz strokes into this one, pulls up, grinding barrel, big spit. Ooh, and he made that section, too. That could be considered a make. <laughs> mahalo, oh, Kiakua. Wow. Thanks be to God. And mahalo, Ehukai. Mahalo, Pipeline. Thank you, Pipeline. Providing. Look. look at that spit, like right in front of the drone. And look at this TP right here. Oh my gosh, perfection. Oh, this is a gnarly TP on the outside, too. Everybody's too far in. Just a couple more feet out, and somebody would have got drained. Wow, these TPs are built by some big 
Indians because <laughs> <laughs> these are the extra roomy TPs. Drop oh, it Brucey. in. Pull it in. Bruce Irons, big spin. Come on, Bruce. Hey. Yeah. B-I, B-I, B-I. Huh? Oh, Brucey. <laughs> that was a score that's going to help <laughs> Team Weed Maps, let me tell you. They're coming in oh, smoking hot this bruh. morning. Pipeline is smoking right now, too. You saw that exhale? That was so much <laughs> spit, so much smoke. Watch Josh's. Even this one just erupted on the end section right there. That was the fire hose, pressure washer, geyser old faithful right here. Bruce Irons How is gets that? blown out. Sick. Cannot wait to see the fluid vision on those waves uh, a little later oh. in the uh, you know, yeah, in our post-production. <laughs> We've got what? a great post-production, you know, so if you enjoy this live show and all the surfing that's going on, wait till you see the pieces that, you know, our team puts together and gets out there on the World Wide Web. Those are some fun stuff. Let's check out some of the fluid vision that you're talking about right now and some of the water angles from Larry Haynes. Yeah, this was from yesterday, so we're just getting the footage from Larry. Throwing it in the machine, cutting it up, and dicing it for you. That is uh, Baron Mamiya. That is Baron Mamiya. Saw the little hair hairstyle extension, yeah, with the spit. Look at that. Or I'll whip your hair. <laughs> and he just did. On cue. That is not actually oh, Baron that's, uh, Mamiya. It's one of our Japanese. Shota Nakamura. Hi. Oh. And Shota says thank you. <laughs> This one, this is none other than the Kala, the Dala, A. Ala Stewart, and he's just got a big oh. room for rent right now. That backwash just makes it like, <laughs> oh, so scary. So fun at the same time. Yeah, A. Ala. Earning that dollar. This is Kala Grace. Another Kala. More dollars. More dollars. And more rooms and more combustion. You can see Ooh. all of the combustibles on the inside of the barrel spitting out there and spitting Kala Grace out into the channel. Uh oh, yeah. Mason, he's gonna start out with his uh -huh. mute grab. That is. And then he's gonna switch it right in the barrel to the indie grab on the backhand. Drags the arm. <laughs> the unique style, the unique technique, and the entertainment courtesy of Mason Ho. Yeah, just to confirm, he totally made that complete all the way to the end. And is that Makai? That's Balaram, beautiful looking wave. Fluid vision, Larry Haynes, courtesy of Hawaiian Water Patrol, getting these epic pipeline shots. With the slow-mo and the beat kicking. You can watch this for a long time, huh, Typo? How's the remix? <laughs> I love it, man. Scratching oh, in the background. Coming with the sick beats That's on this right. event. The intros, the outros, it's it's pumping. Feeling it. Kalani and, boy. Yeah, Kalani boy, Kalani Chapman. Right over the boil. No problem for this pipeline veteran and part of a surfing heritage in his Ohana. Kalani boy, it's in his blood, and you can see why. DNA. Built for pipeline, coming out. Oh. Coming out of that, oh, visions oh, oh. from yesterday, straight into live action <laughs> and some bombs exploding at pipeline. Look at that second reefer coming in for Team Weed Maps. 
<laughs> and that one in front just blows itself to pieces. The next one gonna be kind of rolly. Not sure if there's gonna be a barrel on it. You see that big white water and looks like not quite enough wall. So that'll be uh, obviously unridden. And the next one, just a little bit left over. Got to mow through all of that residual white water and bubbles and foam. That's uh, tough to set your fins and rail on those, although we've seen a couple of our competitors able to get those inside ones, the ones that were just the white room we were calling them yesterday. But no takers on that particular set. But these guys have got some really incredible scores. Curious to see if uh, we've got Brucey's last wave. Oh. That was uh, a great one for him. I think by far his best of the event so far. Let's see. I'm going to check in with my smartphone and see if the smartphone is up and if the judges are awake. And a 9.67 for Bruce Irons. All right, that's a keeper. 9.67. Hmm. Maybe they also won't. Huh? That could have been the 9.67. Might be a. Well, he had the one. He had with the, the other snap. one, yeah. He had the snap. That, you know. No, that wasn't, yeah. <clears throat> with this uh, criteria, I think that snap, I think, was in the five ish. Yep, 5.83 for the snap, 9.67 for the big barrel, 9.17 for the backdoor barrel for Seth Moniz, Josh mm. Moniz for his barrels. He's got an 8.33 and an 8. And then, of course, Newts, Tyler Newton, 9.33, 9.83. Tyler Newton is on Ahi. <laughs> <laughs> on fire. Ahi is fire. Also a yellowfin tuna. Either one. Kona. You need both of them. Yeah. When you put those together. together there you got pretty dinner. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, Tyler... Improving on his scoring today, I believe his previous uh, third wave score was a nine, so that nine eight three just you know improves a little bit. Um, but with the quality of waves and how many waves are coming in in this 25 minute heat, if this first heat is any indicator, it is not close to being over yet. No, there's so many good barrels to be had, and you can get all three of your waves today. You can get three 12s today. <laughs> For sure. Top it out at a 36. Yeah. And take home your 50K. Mm-hmm. See J-O-B jumping oh. in the water. That main yeah. team, the Hui Wax, is going to be sticking it to it. Coming up next, Mahalo to Freaks Store. You see the logo right there. Check out their website, freaksstore.com and their Instagram handle at freakstore underscore official. And um, they're a great sponsorship this year. New sponsor from Japan, 43 stores all throughout Japan. That is a, an impressive and distribution. And that is the end of the opening heat for today for Weed Maps. So all their numbers are in. This is not gonna count, but this is just for love. And that was Seth Moniz coming on in. Well, they're doing the quick turnarounds to fit in this swell. Recap. And the Seth Moniz got us started right at the buzzer of the beginning of the heat, scoring a backdoor gem. And uh, continued all the way down the line to get some help back out from Hawaiian Water Patrol. Joshua Moniz able to highline that pipeline exit, Bruce Iron playing with it right here, just whacking it off the top. Little shampoo on the pole after that. And then he got a sick one, dropping in late, doing the Bruce Irons right there. Classic yep. spit out. When we come back, we're gonna have Eli Olsen, Jamie O'Brien, Makana Pang, Billy Kemper. When we return for more action from the Hui, back to a shootout.
We back at it again. This is the Hui Backdoor Shootout 2019 final day of the contest, final round of the contest. Team, the Hui Wax out in the water. Eli Olsen, Jamie O'Brien, Makana the Gift Pang, and of course, Billy Kemper rounding off the crew. Kaipo Girl as well as Rocky Cannon calling the shots here. Mahalo for joining us and enjoying this action and a little bit of Vala'au, some storytelling, some talking of stories, and some olelo, some language that we're going to bring to you today. Aloha. Yes, welcome. Heat number two. Excited to see what uh, Billy, Makana, Jamie, and Eli can do. They've had a, a pretty good run up to this point. As a team, you know, everybody's got a couple of good ones, but I think uh, Billy's due for, for something in the double digits. You know, we're, we're seeing him get a few, you know, over the couple days, but, you know, just not those super, super deep ones that he's been able to make it out of. He's been kind of riding in the lip line on some, so I think he's due for something uh, spectacular in this heat. I can't wait to see Makana Pang, what he's going to bring. Again, thank you, Kaipo Girl. Rocky Cannon, you can hit me up at Kaipo Guerrero on Instagram. Message me, and we'll try to do our best to get to all your messages. And for you dinosaurs out there, you can hit me up on uh, NorthShoreQuestions at gmail.com. Yeah. We got something for everybody. Everything, yeah. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, too. You know why? Because not only surfing, I got some, like, pretty cool stuff. You know what I did two weeks ago? What first time, two weeks First ago? time ever. It's on. If you go through my feed, you can see it. I sabered off the top of a champagne bottle. Oh, wow. I've always heard about it. Yeah. And I did it. Spang! One time, sabered it off. That's Thank pretty you. cool. What did, what did you use? A saber. A saber? Oh. <laughs> That's what you use. <laughs> How else would you saber off the top of a champagne I was bottle? I was thinking, but I was just imagining you holding a saber, and I just, you probably had to it's, have, like, yellow caution tape around you. <laughs> at at Kaipo Guerrero. <laughs> Swinging that thing around. The video is there, <laughs> sabering off. And I want to thank uh, Raymond No from No Foods for giving me that opportunity. And if you're looking for good local grinds, N-O-H, No Foods, got all the mixes that you need. All right. little pipeline action for, looks like Makana Pang, getting us started here for Team The Hui Wax, 25 minute heat, second heat of the morning. No, like for real, who was filming you? Were they wearing like protective gear and People stuff? People were scared when I had the saber. <laughs> and, they, and it's funny, the video, they're trying to give me like last minute instructions, I just go, ching! There we go, Makana Pang getting a shower the natural way <laughs> to start off his day at pipeline. J-O-B dropping in and getting deep and putting a score maybe on the board. Where did he go? Slip. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. That looked like a J-O-B make written all over it. We'll see what happened maybe in uh, looking at the replay, but a lot of big sets pouring in right now. He's scrambling to get back out there. You see him? Everything looks totally fine. A-OK -okay for J-O-B. And something happened in there that kind of tripped him up or something. But that's, that's usually he's making those guaranteed. Yeah. So we'll see. JLB can rebound. Uh, hey, hey, a little octopus pulled his leash. <laughs> he grabbed up there like, oh. Snagged his ankle yeah. a little bit. Water because patrol. The, <laughs> because the hay was getting rattled. He's like, help me. <laughs> Hawaiian water patrol right on it. And the Aqua Uber going to give him a ride back out to the peak. Oh, yeah. Gosh. What a great way to surf pipeline, let me tell you. <laughs> no yeah. pressure, getting scored, potential to win money if you don't whatever, getting barreled still, and then getting rides back to the lineup. Oh, lovely. And the other thing um, we were discussing this morning is the camaraderie. I was talking to Daryl Stant. Yeah. You know, and, and David, and the the feeling of camaraderie and the mana, the spirit that we have here, is really evident in the performances. And when we talk about mana, I'm telling you, this is not a coincidence. Ka Kanaloa, our god of the ocean, our Hawaiian god of the ocean, feels that mana and has been just sending us all kinds of beautiful waves and yeah. beautiful scenery, just like that. And right up until we needed the waves the most yeah. right in this last couple of days of the waiting period and we were patient there's the brains right there there's the boys i want to shout out rich and francis palea and daryl and david stant all making it happen yep. Nalu. i 
Again, we're always going to do the translation, Hui o Heenalu. It is the group, the Hui of Heenalu is surfers, wave riders. Yep, or club, group, club, surfing club, yep. So, and then also been around for, uh, geez, what's like 40 plus years now? Yep. And then we also have um, more Olelo for you because we greet you this morning with Aloha Kakahiaka. That is our morning greeting. Yep. And, and then as we move into the middle of the day, we have our midday greeting, Aloha Avakea. And then in the afternoon, we have our afternoon greeting that we say, Aloha Awinala. And then right before you go to bed at night, we just tell you aloha ahi ahi and uh, hiamoi, go sleep. <laughs> nice little wave rolling through right there with well, no takers, but... And before you hiamoi, Rocky, you palaka koniho, brush your teeth. Mm. Then when you wake up, palaka koniho too, please. Yeah, hanaho. Han? <laughs> All right. So far, just uh, Makana Pan getting that one little quick cover. And um, Kainoa making sure the surfers in the water can hear the beach announcements. There's the Duke. And this yeah. is in memory of Duke Pao Kahanamoku. And we've had uh, Dr. Isaiah Walker telling us a lot of different stories about the life and legacy of Duke Kahanamoku. We're going to have Dr. Isaiah Walker joining us a little bit later today in the broadcast. Okay, I think they're going to have a restart. <laughs> it's unconventional because a wave was ridden. Uh, but hey, if you like blow the horn, we're going to keep with it. We're just going to stick with the action because this is Billy Kemper dragging into a barrel mm. spin out. Nice little morning shower for yeah. Billy Kemper. That's Billy getting warmed up right there. Beautifully done. We'll check out the replay in a moment, but Billy getting on the board for Team Dahui Wax. Heard Uncle Eddie mention they were uh, ranked number two as far as uh, wax companies around the world. So good on the Hui Wax, making Wait. a great product. Right, sticky. And um, that was just a horn test. They were testing a, a, hey, why a not new horn. Test so. the horn right in the middle of the heat. Hey, <laughs> go for it. He made sure the surfers could hear. They all waved and acknowledged that they knew it was going to be a test. So the clock did not restart. We're still rolling through this heat. And there's the handsome bugger right there. The one peeking around the side? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Duke, Duke Hanamoku. Paoka Hanamoku. We're uh, going to have Dr. Isaiah Walker make an appearance uh, in a little while. He does have um, his primary responsibilities, or kuleana, at uh, BYU Hawaii. Just as he said, he got here from his office door to door in 20 minutes. That's really close by. Kind of. There we go. That's uh, our judges tower with all of our judges. Of course, with the Hawaiian Superman, Kainoa McGee shouting out to our competitors and our premier judges, Love Hodel, Pancho Sullivan, Miles Padaka, Flynn Novak, all with a track record out here at Pipeline. And they're assigning the numbers to each of the rides. And then we got Ben Severson, the troll expert former pro bodyboarder and someone who's had 10,212 barrels in his life controlling all of the the scoring system so that we can keep track of all the numbers and then we're going to double check the numbers recount the ballots and uh, give you the results at the end of the day and the drone right there giving us some amazing footage pat myers mahalo and all of our crew here bringing us the different camera angles, operating the boards and switches. Mahalo to Salt in their studios. Little Mike Prickett, best in the biz, Mahalo. A little bit of breeze coming up right now. We're trying to um, 
see the exact direction with uh, checking out some of the flags and uh, the coconut leaf right here. The buggers stay waving. That is our weather channel. Yep, the buggers stay wet. No it's, need cable. It's raining. No need battery. Just look at the coconut leaves. If the buggers blown down, get out of town. Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> or at least tropical storm. Yeah. And if the sirens are going off, head to your bunker. You never know. But could, could be, be wrong. Could be just a test. Could be just a test, too. <laughs> that was this that was a year ago. That was a year ago today. One year. Where we had, our, the, uh, we had our missile scare. Oh, man. I know. So many people What were, did you do uh, on the missile scare? Uh, we were on our way to Home Depot, and we turned around and went back home. Uh, back to um, <laughs> back home. We kind of have a bunker. Our house is made of, like, <laughs> the hollow tile bricks, you know? Uh, so I get a wooden house. I was and I was I was <laughs> taking plywood and boarding up the windows and stuff like that was going to help from a nuclear missile, and we were filling up the bathtub with water. I had other people's kids at my house because we had a sleepover. To drown yourself. We had a sleepover. No, that's oh. not, that's what you do. Oh, okay. Water is important. <laughs> you need water. I'm going to no, give you guys a survival tip. You guys hear sirens. Fill up every single thing that you have every that vessel can hold water. Available. Oh, there's the brains behind the operation. Yes, Mike sir. Mike Prickett's out in their studios. Thank you, Mike. Mahalo. This is the guy that makes it happen. This is countless hours yeah. and resources dedicated to bringing you guys all of this action. So that's the top of the food chain right there. Yeah, his expertise in the water with equipment, actually getting it done on the front lines to his, uh, you know, connections and, and um, the way he goes about acquiring all of the, uh, the jobs and equipment. He uh, he's, does it all. Lucky. He's got a satellite truck that he drives over here to beam the satellite. We got three cameras on the beach. We got a couple cameras in the water. We yep. got the drone shots. We got a roving camera. And that's not even all his toys because he's got the shot over cam. Right. He's got the Papil cam that we haven't introduced here. But uh, we're going to bring that Papil cam in some future broadcast. That's the underwater camera. That's, uh, we debuted last year at the Buffalo Big Board Classic. That's coming up in, she's next the, month already. Yeah, end of February, Buffalo Big Board so, Surfing Classic. Make sure you join us on that too. That'll be Fun. the same uh, broadcast platform that we're using, uh, surfline.com, explore.org, uh, the YouTube channel, and of course, Spectrum Surf TV here in Hawaii on channel 1020. So. We've got uh, some fun events ahead. Oh, there's our cameraman right there. There's Chad, Laurel. They're excited about the action. <laughs> Chad knows it's finals day. He brought his bright, colorful shirt. Oh, yeah. Easy to find. Easy to find. So if you don't like any of the roving shots, that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Only joking. Oh, they do such a good job, man. It's uh, not easy following every single wave, all of the action all day long. How's that local style sometimes, Rocky? You can almost say anything and then just go, nah, 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 only joking. Nah, 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 just joke. And it would 90% of the time get you out of whatever, whatever your jokes. Whatever, yeah. You, whatever you whatever make. Sometimes joking about. we poke hard, but if we make a joke about you, that's because we love you. But sometimes I poke hard. Jokes are love. 90% of the time, the nah, 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 only joking will get you out of it. That other 10%, oh. Yeah, just Howie. better uh, <laughs> hope you can run fast. I got a bad knee now. I can't even run fast. I used Ooh. to be able to dart like, yeah. like the mongoose that I am. <laughs> now, Sly mongoose. The mongoose just <laughs> limps now. <laughs> so I got to watch out for the jokes. Yeah, you could be roadkill oh. like the one I seen yesterday. Flat, flat goose. He was just, he looked pretty fresh. I was actually thinking about uh, some poo-poos. I'm going to tell you the truth. I should have brought it. tried mongoose? I'm going to tell you the tr truth. And I, it's like I wish I brought the, um, the prop. I have a stuffed mongoose. Oh, really? I have a taxidermied mongoose. Did you uh, arrange for that, or did it somehow I come upon you? bought it at a pawn shop. Oh, you bought it? Yeah. My daughter wanted it when she was eight years old. <laughs> she wanted a real mongoose, I bet. And you're like, OK, <laughs> this is the best I can do, honey, because it's illegal to own mongooses. Geese. <laughs> That was Makana Pang, if you, by, by the way. Just we're still paying attention to the surfing. Yeah, but he didn't get that deep in the barrel. But you know what? You know, yeah, we're we're kind of setting a standard here. <laughs> you got to at least be in the barrel for us to call your wave, okay? Oh, last day we're gonna really 
be a little bit more harsh. Not more harsh, but... Well, because there's so many waves today. Yeah, and here's a replay of Makana Peng. But I like Makana's uh, ability to handle the drop and stand in it, but just no barrel. That'll be a, a non-factor in the big picture, but always fun to be able to ride a wave to yourself here at Pipeline, no matter if there's 70 people out or four people. There's our next four people. Oh. Team Huyo and Nalu getting ready. Well, there's only three on your screen, but I know there's a fourth that'll be joining them. You got Mason and Kala in the frame right there, and I think that's Lahiki sitting on the beach. Ulu boy, guarantee close by. See that current just ripping down the beach, the rapids that it creates. It's literally the pipeline river. So we had a question coming through about the, exactly that swell direction, Rocky, and where the sand goes. So can you tell people on a west swell, where is the sand going to go? Where we're looking at this shot, it's perfectly set up just beyond the Hawaiian Water Patrol jet ski is where the sand is headed. And it can go as, uh, as far down. They're heading towards Gums right now, but there's Gums right there, which is kind of on the corner of Ehukai Beach Park, the border of uh, where the houses start and where the park starts. And then you've just got kind of like straight out in front of the tower, just Ehukai yep. right there. And then a little bit to the right of the lifeguard tower on the other border of the park, a little spot called Sardines. And um, it can go almost as far down as Pupukea, the surf break uh, that's next over to Sardines, which is, you know, then you're talking gas chambers, rocky rights. So it travels a ways on these long extended west swell periods. Tons of sand, like amazing how much sand moves back and forth from winter to summer. Yeah, large grain sand and a lot of ocean energy equals lots of sand movement. And let's see some of the scores. scores. right there. Billy Kemper, 7-8-3 for that one. Yeah. Now, Kana, a couple of fours and fives. Oh, Mahalo. Jamie's uh, 4.67. No waves yet for Eli. Mahalo to Konos. Konos just gave us our breakfast burrito, I remember. Oh, it's a bomber. It's a bomber. And Mahalo Konos. And remember, right in the middle of Konos is Ono. So you know it's good. It's delicious. Ono, the Hawaiian word for delicious. All right, got a question from Matt. What kind of wristwatch am I wearing? And it's, uh, <laughs> if you must know, it is a water-resistant Casio M2000. Nah, <laughs> M1987. I want it at Fun Factory, playing the claw game. No, I bought it for 10 bucks. It's great, it tells great time. Speaking of time, it's 8.45 here, local Hawaii time. And uh, our tide coming up throughout the morning until about 10.48 a.m. where we're going to hit a high tide. Not a super high tide, just a 0.66 feet. So we have pretty lowish tides yeah. throughout the whole day um, and the previous days, too. Got a question uh, from Scotland coming in uh, regarding water temperature here in Hawaii in the winter. And you know, when you're a wuss like me, when it comes to cold water, I consider this water to be uh, on the chilly side during the winter. And we're talking, you know, maybe in the, uh, the mid 70s, maybe, you know, 73, 74 on the cooler days for water temperature. And that's Fahrenheit. I know you're referencing Celsius um, uh, Whopper in Sky uh, Scotland, but Fahrenheit, yeah, we're talking uh, kind of low to mid-70s on the cooler days. And then in summer, it's a couple degrees higher, like in the upper 70s. You know, doesn't quite, you know, maybe on the extra warm days or, you know, the shallow parts of Waikiki where plenty of people are entering the water, it can reach 85, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That's because you have 100 people peeing at the same time. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Probably a uh, you know five or six degree swing in water temperature on the extreme. So we're pretty lucky. It's pretty steady, you know, in the 70s all year round for water temperature. But those mornings or the strong trade wind days, definitely uh, if you're coming out here for the winter, you want to bring 
some kind of a, a long arm spring or, you know, at least a, a, a thicker wetsuit top for those morning and evening sessions? I wear a wetsuit pretty much all winter, either a jacket or a spring suit. Yeah. Just because it sounds warm to you guys, but when you live here, <laughs> it starts, it feels cold. Like this morning, it was anu, it was cold. <laughs> I had, luckily I had the long pants in the back of the car and yeah. changed into them because uh, it's been a, it's, it's January, so. I wheeled the trash can to the end of the, the driveway this morning and, oh man, it was freezing. Here's Eli Olson trying to stay covered in that barrel. And he does and comes out. So Eli doing some good work for himself, not Pau yet. One more for Eli on the inside. Oh my gosh, go for three, please. Drone getting some epic footage of Eli's trek across the break, oh, all the way to Gums. He is officially at Gums. Fun little sandbar break that's gonna be firing whenever this swell <laughs> decides to uh, dip down and Get a little more user friendly. Yeah, you got to get here at five o'clock in the morning to get a wave. As we watch Eli Olson getting a nice one, and then actually, sees another opportunity. Yeah, actually, that one looked pretty user friendly. Couple barrels for Eli Olson. Yeah, nice two for one special. Well, doing some good work for himself, doing some good work for his team, Dahui Wax. Like to say mahalo once again to the Hui Ohe'enalu. As uh, this heat comes to a close, so we are all pow at heat number two. Looks like uh, we could have the every other heat wave pulsing because heat number one was nonstop. Little bit of a break in heat number two. Heat number three just started. And. Uh, Sounds like we'll a recap. see what happened in heat number two. We had Billy Kemper get this 7.83, one of his better waves of the event, and helps Team the Hui Wax build on their score. Makata Pang just cruising in the lip line, looking ever so comfortable as a young man here at Pipe. And then Eli Olsen, one of the more meaningful scores of the heat, gets a spit out barrel. Carves around the section for another little tube time on the inside. And the, the action Hui Wax. continues. Huyo Heinalu will be in the water when we return.
the Hui backdoor shootout. Hui o Heenalu team in the water. Mason Ho, Ulu Aloha, Napiahi Kala, Grace, and Lahiki Mina Mission making up the four man team. Out at Pipeline, Kaipo Girl, along with Rocky Cannon. Calling the shots. Oh, look at this one right here, stacking up on that first reef. Kala Grace, late drop, handles it fine and gets a nice little cover. A little Ooh. rainbow on your screen right there with the spit. Rainbow spray. Yeah. We have our drone flying through the rainbow. Pat Myers, Myers Films. I think I saw a unicorn. Piloting that. Uh, whoa, too early to see unicorns, but. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a horse. We with gotta a, get. We got We on. gotta get Sorry. through through eight heats today. <laughs> we're only on heat number two. You can start seeing unicorns at about heat number seven. No, I we're think. on heat three, man. Oh, heat three. Yeah. Speaking of unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw a pink dragon. Oh, there's <clears throat> beautiful and a point being lit up right now. You see that shot at the top of your screen? Here's a replay of Lahiki the the Mission. Heat. Yeah, Lahiki. And uh, this happened during our commercial break. Little double spitter right there. What did we say uh, before? Triple pumper, double spitter. Palu. And uh, Kala Grace. I feel like he's on a little bit longer board maybe today. Not a bad thing to do. They get in a little earlier here at Pike. You'll take every half second of a head start you can get on these drops, I'll tell you. More sets out the back. Here we go, Paddler. Oh no. Oh my goodness. So that looked like that was Ulu Boy paddling for that one. And uh, was able to pull back. Now he's got to get under this one. Getting into this one. Again, barreled spray. Little parallel <laughs> stats. <laughs> The Duke stats for Mason Hall. Come on, come on. Did he on. just do like the Buffalo? What is his that, arms crossed? That was, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we call that the uh, King Stance yeah. at the Buffalo Big Board Surf Classic. And Mason Hall, what are you going to do? Well, dropping in, grabbing a rail, going right over his fellow competitor, duck diving that wave, and didn't phase him. He's going for it yeah, right there. Arms crossed, parallel stance. That would have scored next month at the Buffalo Big Board Surfing Classic. Buffalo Big Board Surfing Classic. You hold that pose for three seconds and you get two points. All right. What we do is we do all kinds of different poses and spins and stuff like that on top of our big 10 foot boards over there, the Buffalo Big Board Surfing Classic. And we have a judge for each surfer. And what they do is add up all the different points like the Dying cockroach. Yeah. We got the Buddha. We got the King stance that you saw right there. We got the Allen wrench, of course. Yes. And uh, we also have the um, the Tiki. The Tiki. Yep. Yep. And the Scooter Boy, where you take one foot off of the board, you act like you're pushing your skateboard. The Scooter yeah. Boy. So if you haven't seen the Buffalo Big Board Surfing Classic, it's a whole different kind of surfing, uh, but it's really, really entertaining. Yeah, especially when you get into the team. Um, Sports like the sub squatch division. You've got, I believe, six uh, teammates handling that. On a big inflatable surfboard. Big inflatable surfboard. Almost like a river raft. And then we've got the canoe surfing, four man teams of canoe surfing, which, you know, provides not only some incredible rides, but the carnage and the wipeouts and the beatings that these competitors take, man. They are dedicated. It is fun to watch. This is even fun to watch, too. Grabbing a rail inside and oh, just got picked up and smacked down <laughs> right at the end. I believe that was um, Lahiki Mina Mission. <laughs> the whole beach just went oh when he didn't come out of that one. And we saw from the drone that he got in there really nice and clean. This is the straight on shot and then got Kind of picked up in the lip, it looked like a little bit from the drone shot that it just didn't want to let him out. But man, if he would have came out, that was an excellent score in the making. So you'll see um, our Eva Bird shot high in the sky. Thank you, Pat Myers. 
And right as he's getting to the exit, he gets picked up right there and just curled over the lip. He's trying to shoot for that high line exit. You saw the uh, the last little pinch right there. Those, you know, you need to aim the board high. He looked like he was trying to do that, but then contorting your body to fit through that small exit. You know, big entry, and then comes down to that tiny, you know, smaller exit point that you have to really get your body contorting, and it's not easy. No, it's not easy. But getting messages in from around the world. Telemarkski all the way in Stowe, Vermont. Mahalo for watching. And uh, he said the Sabre was very impressive. Thank you, Telemarkski, <laughs> uh, for checking out my Sabre footage at Kuiper Girl Instagram. Swinging that sword. The fact that there was no blood spatter but I is eat. impressive. I'm going to tell you, if I grabbed that <laughs> bottle wrong, uh, Rocky, I would could it easily saber off a finger. If you can <laughs> saber off the top of a glass bottle, a thick glass bottle, yeah. that finger would go flying. So that was a sharp Ooh. sword. Attila, mahalo for watching. Yes, sir. Oh, and then Attila's also saying that Kainoa doesn't need a mic. He can, oh. just, he can just yell out there. He doesn't need the speakers. He's got a, he's got a he's very got, projective voice, that's for sure. He's got a booming voice, huh? And the Groms tuning in again over there at uh, Skate Charleston. Mahalo for tuning in, boys. Freezing cold, but they're hanging out at the shop watching this backdoor shootout 2019. <laughs> Dungle Tinney, all the way from West Ireland, is checking us out. Aloha. Over there, we're going to spread some warmth over there to West Ireland. But I know you guys got some waves, too, so get some. Yeah, Brother Pono, thanks for tuning in also. We've got people right here on island, down the road, across the island, across the state. Got everybody uh, all over the U.S. and globally, too. So thank you, guys. Any uh, indicators or thoughts on Mason's score of that? Grab rail, conventional barrel at pipe, come out to the Duke stance into the closeout. What do you think? What do I think on the score? Yeah, just maybe a, an amateur guesstimate. I'm the worst judge, Rocky, because I give everybody big points. Oh, OK. I'm very generous with the numbers. <laughs> so I would say 10, because we got okay. to a 12. But that's just me, because if I was a judge, I would just be giving everybody big scores, because you love everybody. Almost, yeah. yeah. Kind of love. Or, I mean, all the surfers, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my crew. Yeah. But I'm way too generous, yeah, because a lot of times I'm always looking at waves, and, and, you know, I think it's even a five or something, and it comes into the two. But I'll check to see how smart my phone is. Let me see. Mason Ho got a 7.83. Pretty good. I'm curious if that's going to be uh, factored into his top three scores, but all in all, a pretty good wave here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Got a set approaching. All four surfers kind of keying in on it and seeing it approach, and we'll see who's in the right spot. Could be Ulu Boy, who's paddling there. Oh. Hey, the ostrich checking us out all the way in Toronto. Whoa. Aloha. Right on. Toronto viewers. Been there. What's your favorite part about Toronto? Um, I was there for like 27 hours. In the 27 hours, what was your favorite part of Toronto? The, the pub that my extended relative got married at. Nice. Yeah. The pub, it's like a bar? Yes. They had like a nice little backyard wedding area. And then right there, the reception, pretty cool What's the spot. difference between a pub and a bar? I think they're roughly the same thing. It depends on the, the region. But, region? Um, but uh, the, the word pub was in the name of this place. So that, that was, uh, the, that was the, a clue. the dead giveaway <laughs> that was in a pub. <laughs> Don't recall the exact name, but few years ago. Right there you see some description of 
surfing. I think that was Kala Grace doing a right hand, using his right hand as a bottom turn, the left hand as the wave curling over. That was a great bit of sign language that's universal, recognizable around the world. You know what else is universal around the world these days? The shaka. I know, yeah. You know the shaka sign? Bruh. Hey. The thumb and pinky aloha. You know how the shaka sign came about? You know the story of the shaka? Yeah, or at least uh, I know the Laia version. Uh, did you hear the Kapahulu version? I don't know, but I've sensed there's a battle coming. No, there's not yeah. a battle. <laughs> a shaka battle. So as I'm telling you about the shaka, we're going to watch some of uh, the fluid visions. So we get a combination of education we'll as get the, well the as... The typo uh, version and the, then the Rocky version. I bet you it's going to be the same thing. Actually, we're going to stick with live action. Ulu boy, Napiahi mm. in the barrel, just getting a little bit shampooed at the end, getting clipped in the head by the lip. But go ahead. Really simple. Shaka story. There was a, a conductor, a worker on the cane truck you know, the, the rail, and uh, in, in, the, in the mill, he lost his middle three fingers. And, but he would wave to everybody every day as they were getting on the truck, right? And that wave, people would mimic back to him. And that's why the three fingers are down and the pinky and the thumb are extended. It all started from um, a mill accident where the gentleman lost his three fingers and then it turned into an international sign of stoke that sugar mill where he lost his fingers, Kahuku. So I was alluding to that it was close by. Yeah. So we did have the same story. Well, if it comes from two, two of the same sources, it must, it's two different sources, it must be pretty on track. It must be true. Use that as a golden rule. Shaka nah, don't, nah, don't, don't use that. In writing it's Kala life. Grace, yeah. Kala trying to print oh. money, and he comes out, leaves a little coin in the tray there, but I'm going to count that and cash that one in for Kala That Grace. was a shootout make. Of course, Kala, Hawaiian word for the dollar or currency. Dollar. And, and here he is, printing some. Yeah, like how deep he got right there, and he was able to just get under that last bit of curtain, and it clipped him ever so slightly, which uh, threw off his balance to not stay on the board all the way to the kick out, but definitely consider that a make out of the barrel. Smaller wave on the inside though, so that might affect the quality of the score just a little bit. It was nice and deep though, beautiful wave. Good job, Kala, of course. <laughs> his uh, inflection on his name, the Kako, going to be more over that second A, meaning the sun or the day. Kala. But, uh, and <laughs> Kala, <laughs> the trigger fish. Kala is the trigger fish. The green horned. That one? Trigger fish. The trigger fish. Oh, really? no. Tough skin, though. You got to tr throw that thing straight on the grill. Straight on the grill. Yeah. And then you got to saw through that tough skin to get the soft meat in the middle. But you don't need scale them when you bring them in. True that. You don't even need clean them. You just got to watch out, you know, bust the doodoo -doo bag inside. <laughs> That's how you eat them. Speaking of fish, uh, RTJ Music types in, uh, Aloha Kakahiaka, Aloha Kakahiaka, brother. He says the papil cam maybe should be called the hick cam, the <laughs> octopus cam. It could. Of course, he -e slide, he -e octopus in the Hawaiian language. Some of my favorite Hawaiian food is squid luau. Uh, that and if you've ever had a chance to visit a luau, whether it was uh, you know something that was public or commercialized, or go to a friend's family gathering, oh my gosh, the squid luau is uh, just an amazing combination. Yes, squid luau would be uh, the taro leaf cooked down. Yeah, we call that the luau leaf cooked down. And then we add some coconut milk to that, mix it all up, then we chop up some octopus, we mix it all in there, and that some is bo your boiled octopus. Boiled octopus. Boiled hey, hey, yep. And then that's how we make our squid luau, which is actually Rocky, one of my favorites as well. But the one thing with squid luau, the shelf life is not that long. Mm. So you gotta make sure it's fresh. 
Yep. You don't want two day old squid luau, you will probably be uh, getting sick. And in that case, you will <laughs> palu or to um, throw up, throw up. Regurgitate. Yeah. So make sure the squid luau is fresh. Well, and if you're, you know, at any group gathering, party, you know, uh, a lot that are popular here is like the one year birthday party. Baby luau. A graduation party. Yep. Weddings, um, any anything where you've got a group of Hawaiians gathering, guaranteed there's going to be some squid luau. That's right, and a good time at the paina. That is the Hawaiian word for party. Paina. Paina. Where sometimes we kani kapila, jam music, and sometimes we gotta just tip that inu back. Inu is to drink, but, uh, yep, pia would be beer, e specifically. Right? Yeah. I always just use the term inu as just any kind of drink. Any kind of uh, beverage? Yeah. Adult beverage? Yeah. All right. You saw that last set come through, Rocky, and that one was a pretty straight one. So that's why we didn't have any takers with our four-man team. Uh, from the Huyo Heenalu. Got a message uh, coming in that was mentioning we may have uh, set or broke a record of broadcast time in the booth, you and I. Really? <laughs> With this, over these last few days. Oh, the, the, the cumulative hours that we've uh, spent here watching these guys get barreled just like that. Kala Grace. Kind of on the inside with that foam whitewash pushing up the wave Bruh. but uh yeah i think we might have set a couple of records we've been um, on a roll and to be honest man this morning like whoo it's uh, day number five in all yeah and they're watching color grace in one of those white rooms with all those bubbles and foam up the face but yeah, I'm going to power through this uh, round number six. I love it. I love it. You know why? Because I get a lot of aloha from all over the world. Whoa. Oz Israeli watching us all the way from Israel. Awesome. Oz Israeli, mahalo and aloha and ulu boy napiahi in a barrel. This one's stretching with no exit, though. Yeah, just a little too deep on that one. And probably knew right, right when he went into it that his chances were, were slim, but still, he just got a charge. Oh, and our good friend Chris Culpin, one of the original Lost crew over there in San Clemente. He's over there to get Ghetto House Glassing, Lost Surfboards in San Clemente. All the, board, all the boys over there making boards, checking out. Yeah, Chris, great to have you checking us out, and thank you for all the board building that you guys do. It's a labor of love. Here's a replay of Ulu Aloha Napiahi. And you know what? Back to board building. Thank your shaper. Thank your glasser. Thank your sander. Take them some presents every once in a while, whether it be a, some brownies, cookies, or a six pack of beer, because that is a uh, laborious task. Laborious. Laborious task. And um, it's special. It's one of the special things about surfing that you have handmade equipment. All and right. here's his lost surfboard in Whoa. action. Mason Ho with a big barrel, but they locked the door on him. Oh, well, we have a, a, a moment here. I'd like to thank one of our incredible organizations uh, here on the North Shore, sending in a message. So we'll get get that out to you as soon as we Why don't you figure, out, figure out what these, uh, <laughs> these waves are doing. We'll see if anybody's curious oh. about this one on the inside. And there's one more kind of I think this means it's a long message then. Flirting with our uh, just line up there, we'll see a, a replay. replay of Mason Ho grabbing the rail. Super deep, disappeared right off the bat. And I'm <laughs> sure he did some traveling in there, a little bit, <laughs> bit of a, a, a spit coming through. Okay, but. Dr. Cannon, give us the message. You, I know it's a oh, long one. Oh, he broke his board. Mason Ho, broken board. Ghetto house glassing. <laughs> You guys got to build some more boards for Mason Ho, Chris, and the crew over there. Matt Biolis. Yeah, build one more for Mason. I know Chris. the 
But I know the sh easiest way to ship him over here, the most... Hemo the leash! There you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there waiting. I was wondering why he wasn't hemoing until he gets on the side. Oh, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> Take off the leash. You can, that was a veteran move right there, though. <laughs> yeah, he got that quick. There's the big Brandon Martin on the ski, too. A lot of brands. Mahalo Hawaiian Water Patrol. And uh, mahalo to uh, the Malama Pupukea Waimea organization right there at Sharks Cove. You can check them out each and every weekend and almost every day. They've restored that area with a bunch of new native plants, constantly malamaing that area. Look at this pipeline drop right here for Lahiki Min, a mission in a gaper. Could have some more action down the line if he sticks with it. Oh, just gets bucked off right there. Meanwhile, out the back, Kala Grace. Oh my lord, in a big pipe barrel coming out and he's just been a little bit super cash on those exits. Second one where he just got tapped on the shoulder and maybe needs to hunker down just a little bit more, but incredibly surfed wave by Kala Grace. Here's a replay of Lahiki. He made the meaningful part of this wave, dropping in late Getting in there with that huge spit and then got the rug pulled out from under him. But Kala Grace standing in there, just getting clipped on the shoulder, but definitely a make. He needed a little bit more of the hooey wax on his board. Here's the countdown for this heat. So we're zooming through these 25 minute heats. Hui Ohe and Nalu, third heat of the day is all pow. All finish. But yes, thank you. Sister Jenny, Malama Pupukea Waimea, right there at Sharks Cove. You guys, uh, please check out all of their uh, social medias and check them out live and direct at Sharks Cove. They do an awesome job in that marine conservation district. There's the other half of Mason Ho's board. And here is our heat recap. Team Huyo Hi'enalu. It was uh, started by Kala Grace getting one right in the beginning that was clean, mean, and just like a machine. Mason Ho had this 7.83 where he grabbed the rail and then went to the Duke King stance, parallel stance, exit into the closeout. And then Kala Grace fitting into the white room. We had another good one too, along with Lahiki Mena Mission. Here's Lahiki's wave. Beautiful pipe wave for that brother right there. We'll be right back with more action.
I think every kid dreams about having a house on the beach with a wave going off in the backyard. This just happened to be the best house ever because of that pipeline. Yeah, Walt. Yeah, come on. Konnichiwa! Welcome back to the Hui Backdoor Shootout 2019. And Team Japan is in the water. Shota Nakamura, Keito Matsuoka, as well as Shun Murakami and Kaito Ohashi. Making up the crew from the land of the rising sun. That was a quick shot of Kaito Ohashi. Ohayou gozaimasu. Good morning. And Team Japan looking... Uh, Looking pretty good. Uncle Brian Almona oh, yeah, is giving on site. Thank you, Uncle Brian. And look at that backdoor barrel pumping through. It's Nakamura just a son. freight train. The Japanese bullet train is what he needed to be on to make that one. And this is Keito. Ooh. The 12 point ride. He's uh, trying to build on it, and a quick one right there for, for Shun. Shun Murakami. Now, of course, in this heat, this just happened. That is Kaito Ohashi's. These guys are staying busy. They're trying to catch as many pipe waves as they can in this 25 minutes. In this heat, we do have uh, Kaito Matsuoka, who has a perfect 12 in competition here at the 2019 Dahui Backdoor Shootout. That was the barrel seen around the world. I put a shot of uh, Kato up on my Instagram, and um, with the quote, humility is a sign of strength, and Kato Matsuoka is a peaceful warrior. Humble warrior, yes, for sure. And then I got the translation is in kanji, and I put that up too, just oh, to be nice. bilingual back. Yeah, be authentic. Kato in the barrel. Kato, no more exit though. Mm. Could have been a pretty good score. Curious to know what his uh, other backup scores are, but we'll get to that later in the day. We've got all of these guys for Team Japan getting some really good waves. Shota Nakamura was on fire yesterday as we watched Kato not able to make that funky pipe inside barrel. But Team Japan could be uh, somewhere in the running. They've uh, all gotten some good waves over the previous five rounds. This is the sixth and final round. So now last chance for uh, all these teams, now or never. There we go. At Camp Japan right on the beach here at Pipeline. Of course, like Rocky said, this is round number six. We're hoping that the wind holds up and the conditions keep up so we can get through this whole round. If we don't get through this whole round, the points will not count. So we have to get through all heats in this round for right. all these points to count. And I think that's why we powered through yesterday because um, we had some really good rides you know, in the first few heats yesterday, and then those big sets started to come through, so it got a little bit more cat and mousey, but Jamie O'Brien, in the last heat of the day yesterday, still found a 9.8 at Pipeline, so there were still scores out there, but, you know, powering through that round yesterday was uh, so we could keep all the good waves we saw all day long, so you're spot on there. We do have to complete a full round for all scores to count. It looks like we're going to be in good shape today. You know, we're already into heat number four on the day, which is uh, halfway there. So heat number five coming up next, followed by six, seven, and eight. Thanks for the information. You're welcome. That's what we do, right? Well, that's the Kinda, order in which we count. <laughs> Here we go. And this is Shota Nakamura in the barrel back door butt. Mm. Shota just gets shot down in there somewhere. He got a great backdoor barrel in his last showing out here. 
round number five. That was one of the waves uh, specifically I was thinking of that if we had to halt competition at all yesterday prior to the round being done, that would have been a shame for Shota to lose that one, but thankfully he kept it, and this one could have been a keeper if he would have made it out, but just uh, another fast backdoor wave that he's unable to come out of and gonna latch on to the greatest invention in the water rescue world, the rescue sled on the back of the jet ski. And great technique by Brandon Martin. Skimming across on the inside for powering out through the channel. You know, I give these guys tons of credit, not only for the big waves they're dealing with on the outside and through those gnarly impact zones, but as the beach and as the sand gets moved off of the reef, it exposes so much more rocks that are just below the surface that you have to be very careful in operating around because you can slash open the bottom of that ski uh, running over these rocks and it'll be uh, useless, so. And Uncle Terry is gonna be really angry too, <laughs> so. Good job operating uh, through the minefield on the inside. Oh, update for North Shore Surf Shop. Takeyuki Wakita it will be taking Landon's place today for the North Shore Surf Shop. We saw Landon uh, McNamara yesterday. Um, looked like he rolled his ankle mm. on a wave. And so that ankle injury, Landon's out of competition. But the good news is Takeyuki Wakita is going to be taking his place, pipeline legend. And more good news few weeks, Landon McNamara is going to be dropping a whole nother album. So if you love All feel right. good reggae music, man, check out Landon. Yeah, I saw him wrapped up with a big block of ice around that foot. And it happened on a wave where he made the, the critical part of the wave, made the drop, got in the barrel, came out. And then that end section was just kind of pulling into that closeout on the end where it was, uh, you know, didn't look that hazardous, but we talk about, you know, anything happening and everything happening when you wipe out on any wave at pipe or back door, you got to be bracing for, for some kind of impact. And unfortunately for Landon, it just uh, tweaked his ankle and uh, has to uh, pull him out of the competition. But Wakita, well qualified, will step right in and trading a, another helmeted surfer for another helmeted surfer. I wonder if they thought about that. Protect Probably the po'o, protect the head. Yes. That's where all the brains are at. So they say. Mahalo to Jack from San Francisco tuning in and asking about some of the best shapers on the North Shore. We touched on it a little bit. Of course, uh, we had uh, messages uh, from Jeff Bushman yeah. chiming in. I've got to go with uh, my favorite, Sino Megalenis. And then I'm going to go with Carl Shopper, as well as Eric Arakawa, John, John Pizel's out here, carrying Wade Tokoro as well on the east side, but making great blades for the North Shore. Um, also, I like uh, Brett Marmoto too. Brett Marmoto, uh, right? Some great at boards sunset. And, uh, and Pat Rawson. Pat Rawson. Great, great guns. Glenn Minami, Glenn Pang, Dennis Pang. Eric Arakawa has uh, been making a lot of good boards for a lot of years. Gave him two shouts now. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear your. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Eric Arakawa. Your, he's a. Uh, and the Iron Drop. Great great work of those boards and then we saw Jack Robinson he's going to be coming up for CBD MD Jack Robinson will be on those Arakawas as well a professor he takes a very scientific approach to board shaping yeah you know uh, when you watch the replay on Spectrum Surf Channel um, we you see our commercial breaks that we've been throwing in there and then uh, Spectrum Surf throws in a few more, and Eric's got a pretty cool commercial on the Spectrum Surf channel. So when you watch the replay, you can check it out. Yeah, over there, the Wailua Sugar Mill. And you know what? I just I thought about another thing, Rocky. We talked about 
you know, turtle traffic and everything. I want to move some of those turtles at Laniakea and make a turtle pool at the Wailua Sugar Mill. It used to be a sugar mill, so we know there's adequate water around there. Make a turtle pool, so that way we don't make traffic, and then everybody can go to the Wailua Sugar Mill, and you can check out some shapers, you can sh check out some surfboards, you can buy some soap, you can see the turtles, and then the traffic will flow smoothly. Yeah, and there's a little... Um, turtle pool. Fun little gift store there for some, you know, authentically made, like, coconut peanut butter and all those kinds of little... Uh, treats to enjoy. What but about the turtle pool? The turtle pool? Um, any diversion from attention right at Lani Ikea, I'm in favor of. <laughs> um, you know, I did see a... a Y'all be safe in the turtle kind of pool. A fake bump, uh, fake funny sticker that was like, relocate the turtles, save Lani Ikea. <laughs> I, I saw that one too. I think someone gave me one of those. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, there is ability to walk under the bridge that's right there at Lani Akea, just an idea. Um, I got some white paint. I could lay down a crosswalk in probably like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> One place to cross the road. <laughs> and uh, just assign a policeman their special duty to get jaywalkers and send the message that you're going to use this crosswalk. And using this left right here. Kaito Ohashi. That is but a Kaito. His name rhymes with your name. Kaito, Kaipo, yeah. Kato. Looking at this one, and Kato Matsuoka in the barrel is going to have to fight his way out of it, but he does a good job to do just that. What a guy. You know what? Continues to impress me. Yeah. Great Kato surfer. Kato Matsuoka. Here we go. Check out this replay of... Kato Matsuoka with a pretty good backhand barrel. Going to get a decent score. Kaito Ohashi just way too deep on that one. And uh, he's not able to, to come out. There you see him paddling back out and going to have a chance for another wave. These 25-minute heats just a little shorter than what we had yesterday because of the time permit that we're trying to fit within. So mahalo to the Hui, mahalo to all of our great sponsors for bringing us this 2019 backdoor shootout presented by Freak Store, presented by Weed Maps. Got a whole another host of great sponsors. We got Tarot Brand. We've got um, Kona Red Monster. Check it out right there. Beautiful shot right. on the drone. Look at all the, sh the shadows from the coconut trees right there on the ocean. That's like a like a canvas. Like the Beautiful ocean is painting. the canvas, and the coconut trees are like the painting. It's like a moving piece of art. Beautiful, beautiful shot from the drone. And um, in uh, just a moment, we'll introduce you to a special guest that's joining us right here in the booth. And uh, we'll get you guys to come inside here. I'm Rocky Cannon, of course. We've got Kaipo Guerrero. We've been on the call for all five days. And, and we, got we got here? Eli Olson. Welcome to the balcony, Eli. Yeah, boys. Good to join you. Good to have you in here. Yes. Great my, uh... surfing out there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What's your thoughts on this competition? Because uh, it's unique. My opinion, I really think it is the best contest in the world. There's, there's no losers. They only run if it's good waves. It's at Pipeline, the best wave. In my opinion, the best wave in the world. And uh, it's with all your friends and all the best guys. And it's, it's just such a special event every year. People around the world are echoing that, your exact sentiments, because we're getting so many messages yesterday on Instagram. I got 170 DMs, and every single one of them was complimentary of the show and mostly of the surfing that you guys are putting on. Yeah, I mean, I think Team Japan is out right now. These yeah. guys have just been <laughs> every year. These guys just put on such a show, and I'm such a fan of every one of these guys. Like, we joke around. We're like, they're Team Kamikaze because they just they just send it. Here's another set right here. Shota Nakamura <laughs> sending door. it there at right the back there. door. Shota's getting drained on a backdoor <laughs> bomb. Like, 
these guys are so talented and so humble. It's, it's always awesome to watch these guys. Yeah, we've had a, a pretty cool connection with Japan. It seems like for a long time, you know, during the Hollywood International Open, we've got Japan men's there. And then, you know, the, the Chargers that have been here for a long time, you know, Wakita's going to uh, step in place of Landon McNamara for Team North Shore Surf Shop. And he's been doing it for a long time, paving the way for these guys. And Shota Nakamura, impressive. Yesterday, his backdoor wave was so gnarly. Yeah, that wave he had <laughs> yesterday, it was as big as pipe can get. Yeah. And uh, for him to go right and really commit, that takes, like, serious heart and yeah. cojones uh, for sure. Yeah. 100% our connection with Japan because we like to top him off some oishi ramen sometime. Mm -hmm. We even took a ramen and we localized it and we created the Simon here in the islands. But that was all the influence of Japanese here in Hawaii with ramen. Brother, guess what I ate last night? Simon. <laughs> with some leftover chicken katsu. Oh, wow. right inside. Drop one egg. Some you shoyu. Egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Choked black pepper. Oh, I never have kimchi, but I would have put them inside. Yeah. But yeah, oh no. Right on Japan. Mahalo for that. What were you? <laughs> yeah, let's, let, you know what? Do we got it? Let's show it, man. Because I want to see Keito Matsuoka, the peaceful warrior, charging here at Pipeline. Here it is, Eli. You can talk us through this one. Okay, so this size is about as big as a first reef set can bring. Any one foot over, it's already washing through. So this is as gnarly and big <laughs> and beautiful, as, in my opinion, as a pipe wave can really handle. Yeah. And Kato just surfed this thing absolutely perfect. His positioning was beautiful. He seemed really calm and comfortable in such a heavy situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we were all just standing up screaming and you couldn't be more stoked for this kid. Last year, he had another 12 in the event. He had a really good entry at Wave of the Winter. And he just backed it up this year with an even better wave. There we go, live action. Live there action, and this is Kato again. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> oh man, that was a tough one though. Just a screamer down the line. Not able to make it, we'll make sure he's okay. He pops up right there, man. Talk about the wipeout right there, you know, especially uh, when you're in the barrel. A lot of people, you know, and, and I agree too, you know, the barrel is your kind of safest place to be in a sense, mm -hmm. but still a lot can go wrong and it's not that safe in that barrel. Yeah, like <laughs> we always think like, okay, pulling in is definitely safer than going over the falls or right. getting lipped. But um, I think there's been... Doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Yeah, no, there's there's been some serious slams in this event. Um, I think Seth Moniz just had a pretty good one. He actually hit his head. He's, oh, o oh. he's okay, but he had a, a good scare, and that was pulling into a left. Shota Nakamura. Nice In one. and out of a pipe wave. Well, you guys are warriors, Eli. I mean, it's incredible how much charging has gone on in these last four days from the whole crew. And, yeah, people have been paying a little bit of price, but, I mean... The injury list isn't that long for how gnarly it's been. I mean, we got Landon McNamara with the rolled ankle, and then you told us about Seth, and then we had Kaivi Berry with the mm -hmm. full face plant. Yep. He got a couple stitches. He kissed the reef a quick one. Um, I think Koa had a little bounce. I had a little bounce. Nothing major, just some scratches. Right. Um, I'm sure a ton of guys bounce off the bottom, but they're so adrenaline out. I bet you there's, uh, let's see, there's 32 guys. I bet you all 32 of you have bounced at some point yeah. during this event. Yeah. Uh, which is a credit to you guys charging and being out there, so. Okay, uh, so, we, so we still got three minutes left. We had a little, these guys are still figuring out the, the horn. The kid is a little, lot of horn. little horny over there. I know. <laughs> Excited, bro. It's like premature a, horns going on. <laughs> but I got a new toy over there. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah. Don't touch the horn. It looks like there's some off. waves on the way, Whoa. too, so. Those extra three minutes could be a little blessing for these guys. Yeah, for sure. It was um, just an uh, inadvertent pre-horn. So uh, they do, in fact, have a few more minutes. And a lot can happen in that couple minutes. And the first heat this morning, man, I think they really somehow just scored an awesome pulse of waves. Team Weed Mount goes <laughs> left, right, boom, boom, like right after another. <laughs> I just had the b best vision here on the balcony. Peeking over the corner on the balcony to us was Mike yeah. Ho. And uh, first of all, he's a 
legend. Second of all, he is just a, such an entertaining guy, just like his son, Mason. Yeah. And he said, hey, let's talk a little bit more Hawaiian language because sometimes guys get putty. <laughs> what is it, Rocky? Putty. Putty. The slap. It happens. Yeah. We were talking about wipeouts. And, you know, Pipeline can hand out some putty. Oh, my Shun gosh. Murakami backhand grabbing oh. the rail and putty. Yep. That was a putty right there from <laughs> Mother Nature. On cue, huh? Looks like he didn't like the the way that Alan was lining up and decided that he was going to try to dive through and penetrate. You see him grab the rail on a pretty good sized backdoor wave and right there just make the decision to abandon ship. Might have been a good call. Not sure, you know, it's it's always hard to, you know, figure out exactly what's going on with each surfer and, and you know, we, we do a little bit of armchair quarterbacking up here sometimes or whatever, but Bruh. only you know right when you're on that wave of what you're seeing, what you're feeling, your board and the rail, the fin, whatever's going on, it's, uh, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Eli, sometimes I'm the smartest surfer when I'm up here on the balcony <laughs> as, far, as far as armchair quarterbacking. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, Eli? You know the saying, talk is cheap. Action. For sure. Is, like, is a real deal. There's going to be people, people will be on the beach, shoulda, coulda, woulda, all day long. Right. 365 <laughs> a year. Why didn't you make this one or why didn't you go on this one? But only you know or the athlete knows when you're in the spot, what you're feeling, what you see at the time. Right. It's so fast and you have to just react and trust your gut, you know? And it's not just this contest. Anytime you surf pipeline a lot, Eli, and anytime you're out here, there's always an audience watching you. So. Are you ever aware of, of, you know, the people watching when you're out there surfing? Sometimes you think about it when um, it's a really crowded day and you hear people cheering. You kind of think like, oh, if I get a fun one, you know, you, you're kind of entertaining. But for the most part, I really try and be present on what's right in front of me. The task at hand. Ooh. Oh, my Lord. That was a putty was for Kato Matsuoka right there. But with the, the with the glory, Eli, also comes the payments right there. Oh all day every swell people are paying the price and it's a uh, broken, oh, broken board yeah, yeah. and that's so more payment right there that yep. is literally his payment for the perfect 12. yep it came you know i'm sure he's bounced a couple of times too he's been paying you know for that 12 uh, <laughs> ever since even before it and after it but the glory of that 12 so worth it for keijo matsuoka let's check out the heat recap and this is nakamura san Shota firing a Shota across the bow, Kato. getting us going. Yep, Kato. That's a nice spitter. Kato again, just so comfortable in a gnarly situation, like you said, Eli. Peaceful warrior, quoted by Kaipo, shaking hands with Makua Rothman. Oh. All right. You know what that tells me? Team CBDMD coming up next.
waves that don't look humanly possible to ride, blocking out all of your fears and just committing 100% to something that really is, is a life or death roll of the dice. The ones that you don't expect to make and you make it, those are the best ones. Those are your wave of the winners. You never know, man, who's gonna win in the end. <laughs>
He ended up drowning, but the North Shore lifeguards did an amazing job, and they revived him down at Aukai. All right, dropping in. Makua Rothman. That's Makua. So cool, during the commercials, like, they're showing Makua surfing, and then he's singing, like, his own soundtrack over his own mm -hmm. surfing. That, that's so rad. He's, he's talented. He's so talented. <laughs> he can do everything. I know. He can dirt bike. He can surf. He can play music. Good jet ski driver. He does it all. He's got an okay golf game. <laughs> <laughs> Makua right here showing his pipe game and grabbing the rail. And, you know, we talked about some of the guys, um, you know, in your heat, like, I feel like Billy Kemper was due for that really good wave. He's kind of just been a little ahead of the section or a little too deep in the previous rounds. Mm -hmm. Makua also, like, we've seen him perform amazing here, but I feel like he's due for that one that's just going to set the tone and, and reach that excellent level. He's been a little bit ahead, a little bit behind, and, and looking for him to get a, a, a really good one before this heat is done. Yeah. Oh, this looks like Nathan Florence going oh, yeah. right. Beautiful back door wave here. He's gonna sneak out the bottom there. Oh, pretty, pretty stuff. And I believe Kaivi having a look. Man. Pipeline, spit, <laughs> and Kaivi buries out. That drop, him, for him to hurl himself over the ledge with stitches in his face from the other day. And uh, he's, he's leading our what we dubbed the Warrior or the Medal of Valor Award mm -hmm. for this entire event. He's uh, been the guy that's not only charging and getting good waves, but just, you know, after literally going face first into the reef to paddle back out and do it, it takes some mental courage. Here he yeah. is again, Kaivi Barry. On the replay, right now he's leading the Medal of Valor standings with the prize of a surf with the pups, with Rocky. <laughs> and... Uh, Nate Florence. Nice backdoor barrel. One of your crew, Eli Olson. We're talking about Nathan, John John, Kiran, Koa, rivalries. Who talks the most smack out of your whole crew as far as rivalries and stuff? Who's who's the heckler of, of the of the gang? I actually think Nathan is the heckler of the gang. Yeah. He's just <laughs> he's so funny, but he's so competitive at the same time. And uh me and Co are pretty good too. We all we all give each other jabs all day long, but uh, yeah, Nate loves a good little jab and he's the class clown. Huh? Yeah, he's 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 always cracking himself. He cracks himself up, which makes me laugh even harder. Yeah. Any given time of the day, if he wants to laugh, he'll tell some joke or something, and he will legit like tear up from his own joke. <laughs> Last four years, I've watched Nathan Florence not just in his surfing but in his physique just turn into a hammer, just turn into a beast. This, he's training hard, isn't he? He is strong. He trains almost every single day. He's wow. really into the CrossFit and the cross training, and he's into weights. And, um, yeah, he's he's so determined and uh, puts a lot of hard work into it. And you, Eli, you do some training yourself. You are a, um, a master of the suave. you, you got a good jiu-jitsu game. I have my brown belt now, and, yeah, I've been training seven, 17 years. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Whoa. I, uh, I was getting in all kinds of trouble when I was really young, and my dad was just like, hey, uh, I'm going to throw you in training, you know, learn some discipline and maybe learn how to defend yourself. And I fell in love with it, and, and I never stopped. What's your favorite it. part about uh, jiu-jitsu? My favorite part is how you can go so hard and walk out of there 100% healthy. Compared to boxing, you go hard, you walk out of there with a black eye or a busted <laughs> nose, and you feel dizzy, and you're like, man, that's probably not good for my brain. Yeah, that was good for Makua's brain right there. That was yeah. one of his better waves that he was able to find that good, solid pipe coverage and get a clean exit. So good job, Makua Rothman, getting back on his board. And he'll get some Kokua from Hawaiian Water Patrol. But yeah, you know, in that kind of uh, environment, we watch Makua Rothman have to contort a little bit and do some fancy body work to get himself in that wave and out. Yeah, that was well done. He uh, he made the most of that wave. Almost had to grapple with his board a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Our director, David Bowen, who's a substitute teacher over at Kahuku High School, just sent us a little message. He caused a little trouble in class, Eli. So he's actually backing you up. Yep, yep. I was... Uh, 
I was definitely a class clown. Yeah. And, uh, I had a lot of fun in my high school days. I kind of just knew I was like, I was set on the surfing and and I just I just really had fun in high school. Live life. Well, and um, you nailed it with the jujitsu training and, and compared to other, you know, martial arts training at that level, you'll be walking away with some uh, bumps and bruises, black eyes, like you said, busted mm -hmm. lip. Um, Anybody ever uh, get a little too serious in jujitsu class sometimes for training? Every once in a while, there's guys that a um, little too much pride and mm. and uh, they'll they'll go a little harder than they need to. But I'm I'm pretty good at uh, avoiding it and keeping things really smooth and yeah. and just I love just having those flow rolls where you can go hard but it's smooth and respectful. And, right. And you shake hands and you have all smiles and everyone goes home healthy. Yeah. Good. So just about 12 minutes, yeah. uh, a little over halfway through this heat. Michael Olbowitz uh, writing in and uh, saying that he's watching. Michael Olbowitz, a great movie director. He just recently put out um, the Nathan Fletcher movie, if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's just a great guy, filmmaker. And he's been checking us out. And Rocky has great stuff to say about you. He said, I'm doing OK. Yeah. Um, well, we had an um, awesome talk story with Nathan Fletcher where we kind of teased that movie. Um, that just came out, so awesome. Thank you very much. He's got a couple other real interesting films, too. Drop them. Well, one of them has been pulled from the shelf, so we're not going to. But it's an interesting film on surfing documentary. Everybody can do their own homework. I just, I just put the little bait out there sometimes sprinkle. and sprinkle them and then let people um, find, Run with it. find your way. Finding our way into, uh, we got one, two, three, four, five heats already in the books. If we can make it through three more. Yeah. Then we're going to finish this round. You what, know, what do you think? You're looking at the coconut leaf. I'm looking at my channel. first indicator of what the wind's doing. I'm looking straight at the coconut tree. That's the indicator right there. And the coconut tree is still, not even the tips is fluttering. Maybe just a tad. But here at Pipe, it can uh, withstand, you know, a pretty good breeze. It'll still hold its uh, integrity and keep that barrel pretty much open. But we talked a little bit about um, most days, the little morning sickness at Pipe. Uh, not really evident this morning. If we judge the first heat, it was firing. Looks like she went to bed early last night and got enough sleep, and she woke up looking beautiful first thing in the morning. Yeah, we came down here maybe around 6.45, just when it starts getting light, and yep. we knew it was going to be hmm. a beautiful day, and we were worried about these winds for sure, yep. but um, so far it's been just beautiful waves, and the wind's been nice to us, and um, we're just hoping that everyone gets an equal chance through yes. this round. Talk about the influence the surfers have as we watch this paddle right here. We'll check out this pipe wave first, Jack and just Robinson. too deep for... J. Rob, and um, we'll watch this potential for back door maybe or pipeline. No rides there. Hey, um, Eli, I got a question coming through right now, and uh, they said, please ask Eli, where's the worst place to wipe out out at pipeline? Worst wow. place that to wipe out? I would say right at Ains, which is just in between off the wall and back door. That's shallow a, it's the shallowest part of the entire lineup yep. and that's right where those backdoor waves get a little ugly yeah it's just so dangerous and that's right where i got knocked unconscious that's where i think jamie o'brien broke his leg before that's dusty where, dusty pain yeah dusty uh, pain right in that area yeah right in that area um there's been so many dangerous wipeouts right there and yep. in my opinion i think that's the scariest place i think that's a there that's you go a, a, appropriate assessment you ain't gonna wanna go down there. <laughs> Stay away from me. Um, Eli, talk about the surfer's influence uh, in the day-to-day -day calls with this the Hui backdoor shootout format. It really makes your opinions of, you know, the surfers give a really big influence um, on the day-to-day -day calls. That's another thing that's so cool about this event is um, it's not one person who doesn't really care, you know? It's like, it's a group of surfers and we all come together and we're all like, it's a voting thing, and everybody's like, yeah, it looks great, or nah, we should wait a day. And um, everyone comes together, and 
Oh, this here one goes. coming Makuda together for Makua. Oh, but just uh, see the drone shot right there. He disappeared from view very quickly. So that was one that we're going to keep an eye on him, making sure Water Patrol gets in there. He's above water, back on his board, but it's, you know, working as a lifeguard here, it, it, you know, my days uh, years ago, being here every day, every big swell, every good swell, and seeing wipeouts like that, you're just like on the edge of your seat mm -hmm. because you know at any moment, that could be the one that's like, we gotta go help. Mm -hmm. And um, just, a, you know, a miracle that everybody, for the most part, is able to, to resurface, but it's so, so dangerous. It is so dangerous out there, even though like it doesn't look that big, sometimes these four to six or six to eight foot range days are the most dangerous because there's <laughs> even less water on the reef. And um, a lot of people let their guards down and that's when they end up getting really hurt. Yeah. This looks like Nathan Florence. Yes, it is. Nathan, view from up above and he's below in the barrel pipeline. And Nathan goes complete, comes out, punches out the back, another peak. And we have another taker. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Kaivi Barry checking this bomb. Oh. And that one too, you're just like watching like, come on bro, pop up. So close. But that was a heavy, heavy wave charging Kaivi Barry. Oh, we're gonna get some replays, but I got questions for you after we get through these replays. We're gonna start off with Kaivi Barry, Eli. Oh, I think he was just a tiny bit tiny bit behind that shockwave. Mm. I think if he was a foot or two wider, he would have just cleared that shockwave and maybe got spit out. What about Nathan? Look at Nate's stall right here. See how he Sick. dragged his hand? I, I haven't seen too many guys do that, and I love when Nate does that. It's such a stylish, like, uh, rare stall. And, uh, yeah, it looks sick every time he does it. So unique. And uh, so I got the question coming from Folky writing in, and Folky wants to know, he wants you to talk us through your paddle into a massive wave. When you're paddling into one of those giant waves, talk us through what's going through your head and how your body's feeling. Uh, there's so many mixed emotions. Um, I just had the biggest paddle in of my life recently at a, at a reef on North Shore. And, I think that's um, what he's alluding to, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I personally, I kind of, I feel like uh, I kind of black out. Like I, <laughs> I'm so hungry, and and there's so much going on, and and not to sound like exaggerating or anything, but you know you could die, and there's so many mixed emotions, and you have to just really be present. And in a way, I feel like it's meditation. Like you're so present that it's it's just pure. And, laser um, focus. It's laser focus, and it's so pure, and you're being present, and everything just is like so fast, but at the same time, it's like slow motion. And it's just like, <laughs> and I just like, you can do all the training in the world. You can do everything right and have a shocker, or you can just just go for it and things can come together. And uh, it's really up to, uh, I say it's up to the universe, you know? It's just like, you can do what you want, but it's gonna unroll out the way that it's gonna happen. And it's just like, you gotta just ride it and, and let it take its course. Well, there you go, yeah. So Evie Berry. He He's got a think, sick... Well, things went his way, right? Barrel. And here's a replay, Eli, of Kaivi Berry. Oh, Beautiful. he rode that thing perfectly. And he broke through. And that highline exit that is required on a lot of these pipe waves that are kind of bending out a little bit, the presence of mind to get the rail up into that corner pocket. There's like, pretty much that's the, you know, unless you muscle through the bottom, which is tough here at Pipe because it's such a powerful lip, to get up to that high line, small little trap door. Mm -hmm. uh, takes a lot of skill. Good job, Kaivi. Yeah, that was well done. He rode really high and just squeaked out. Unless you're <laughs> like a Kaimana Henry or, <laughs> yeah. or some of the big big guys that can just handle those lips, um, you gotta squeak out the top. Well, I, part of the reason I think that we were able to have pipe turn on so early in the morning is um, our lack of trade winds. I feel like, you know, normally pipe likes to come alive, you know, when the sun comes over, you know, mid mid morning, 10, 10, 30, winds are starting to fill in and uh, help it a little bit. And those classic days when it's 10 feet and bombing, trade winds, all sunny. And then it, you know, it pumps 
all night too and the winds are kind of still blowing at nighttime that when you wake up in the morning yeah pipe you know has to recover a little bit mm -hmm. uh, early in the morning but with the lack of winds I think that helped us this morning get her uh, up and going bright and early. Definitely I think Look that's that's spot on. Oh my gosh. Oh. That wow. was a beautiful wave. It just <laughs> snuck under Jack Robinson. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Combustion out of a pipeline. Oh, Here comes Barrel. another one. Oh, sneaking under. There is still potential for anybody in this event to go from last to first. She is yeah. so right. That's yeah. what's like another thing that's just, there's so many great things about this event, but someone who's nowhere near the running could get three in a row, three beautiful waves, and go straight to first and win this whole event. Yeah, um, in the final round. Oh, Let's bravo. just take another look at this wave and the combustion that came out of pipeline. That was probably as perfect as a wave gets at pipe. And you know that you want to be feeling like you're in the right spot, not a fraction out of position. And that's the only reason Robbo pulled back. Yeah. Because there was something there he was feeling or not feeling. Mm -hmm. And you want to be a thousand percent sure. You know what? <laughs> People are feeling this show. Cornwall, UK, writing right. in. Helen, thank you for joining us all the way in England. We've had Israel check in, Eli. We've had um, Denmark check in. We've had all across the US. It is gone viral. What wow. do you think about that? That's amazing. Um, thank you guys for supporting and tuning in. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be a part of. And we, uh, we thank you guys for all watching. and. Um, Supporting surfing. Yeah, I got another viewer from England as well, Kaipo from Blackpool. Hey, Mike. Yeah. And um, Brother Drew, Drew checking in from New Jersey. And um, loving the, the little hints at nicknames. Speaking of your crew, you know, what's uh, some of the more funny ones of your crew or the cooler ones or interesting ones or whatever you want to share? Um, the best one's got to be Nasty Nate. <laughs> yeah. We've just, we've called him that for... I heard he's been trying to drop the nasty lately. His Instagram, he did, and I was I was so bummed <laughs> because I always type in nasty and I can't find his thing, and I'm like, oh, it's back to Nathan Florence. He's being professional. I'm like, <laughs> then somebody took it like that. Somebody took Nasty Nate, like, immediately. Oh, I'm oh. sure. Yeah. And There's a lot just, of Nates out there that want to be nasty. Yeah, but this is the real <laughs> nasty Nate, Nate Florence, and... Um, we were just like Groms and so many funny stories, but Nasty Nate came stuck. up and it just stuck. And for life, till he gets married and we're old, I'm gonna call him Nasty Nate until the day I die. I had a message that how many goose references from Top Gun does Nathan Florence make per day? I don't even know where that message came from unless there's a backstory to that one. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. He's just such a character. Nate is, he's throwing out stuff from Star Wars to Top Gun. To, <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> to, he's really into movies and books and... Uh, and quoting them. Yeah. At the right time, yeah. I'm sure. And all times, wrong times, right yeah. times. He's <laughs> just, yeah, he's so funny. Well, there That's he it. is all pow. Yeah. That is the end of the road for CBD MD. And we're going to accumulate all those points, do some math and figure out our standings. But that is the end of the heat. We're going to have a heat recap to see some of the action that happened so far. We're going to let Eli Olsen talk us through this McNamara. recap. But first, we'll stick with Makai McNamara, North Shore Surf Shop. And here's our recap, Eli. Makua Rothman started the heat with a nice little warm-up barrel there. Nate got this beautiful backdoor wave, stalling the entire time. Came out. Little floater. Kaivi got this nice end bowl. Nice little spitter. And, and Makua, Rothman grabbing a rail, spit all over, makes the exit for CBD MD along with Nathan Florence. Look at that stall, look at that barrel. When we come back, North Shore Surf Shop will be in the water.
flying over the North Shore of Oahu, and we're gonna land at Pipeline for the 2019 Dahui Backdoor Shootout. Final day of competition here. Final round of competition. Round number six, out in the water, another four-man team. This time from the North Shore Surf Shop, Eala Stewart, Makai McNamara, Takayuki Wakita, as well as Baron Mamiya. For the crew from the North Shore Surf Shop, Kaipo Girl, along with Rocky Cannon on the call. See the kids playing right there during recess on the playground at Sunset Beach Elementary School and panning over to the big boys playground. Much more perilous playground here, Pipeline. Oh yeah, we got a big swing set over here. Mm -hmm. Jungle gym is scary. <laughs> so on their studios bringing you this broadcast. Adult supervision required. And uh, we're streaming this at the Spectrum Surf Channel, surfline.com, explore.org, as well as on YouTube and thehui.com. Thank you, everyone, for watching, even our fans in Nelson, British Columbia. Awesome. Aloha. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Keep the messages coming to northshorequestions at gmail.com or the at Hypo Guerrero Instagram direct message. We will have... The doctor joining us uh, in just a little while had to wrap up some of his primary kuleana at BYU Hawaii just a few minutes down the road. So Isaiah Walker will join us in just a bit. But we thank Eli Olson for being up here and uh, not only being a talented surfer, but a smooth operator with the cans on the headphones. Natural. Talking us through some pretty decent rides for Team CBDMD was... Uh, Ka'ivi Barry getting a couple good scores that'll add to his heat total, I'm sure, or his uh, competitive total. Nate Florence getting a couple nice ones, too. Yeah, so that was the last team in the water. Now we have North Shore Surf Shop, and like you said, Eli Olsen. Well, hopefully we can get a couple more guests up here. Big year for Eli. Biggest paddle wave of his life in 2018, as well as achieved his brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So 2018, big year for Eli Olsen, and we're looking forward to a big 2019 for OE. Yeah, and we'll see Good start here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Here's a start for Makai McNamara. In a pipeline barrel, grabbing rail, and getting shut down. That one just kept on peeling. Looked like for a moment right at the beginning that it was going to be a, a sure exit. And the wave just kept curling and curling and curling. Oh, morning and, exercise um, here. See, that's not a bad gym, is it? Man, what a way to get a nice workout, strolling along the beach, seeing some of the best surfers right here at Pipeline. And, uh, and having a drone just track you. <laughs> having a good old time. Makai McNamara tracking this one. Almost was able to squeeze out the doggy door right there, but that wave ran away and uh, turned out to be unmakeable for Makai. We got uh, Takayuki Wakita in place of Landon McNamara. Yeah. Ayala Stewart out there with Baron Mamiya. And uh, Team North Shore Surf Shop. Right here in their sixth round. They've got uh, some good scores on the board, but they really would love to add some more in this final round. I know um, Ayala was able to get a few in the last round, but, you know, the guy carrying the team so far with the big scores has been uh, Baron Mamiya, it seems like. Makai's had a few good ones, too. But he'd love to reach into that double-digit category. Rocky mentioned Takuki Wakita. And um, Takuki Wakita is replacing Landon McNamara. He sustained an ankle injury yesterday, rolled an ankle. So that's why he's not in the water today, if you're just catching up with us. And we're going to catch up with some water footage right now. Eric Ippel from Ippel Films provided us with some great shots from the channel. Slow motion, beauty and the beast. This, this is, is pipeline. Water level. We've seen the fluid visions, jet ski level. This is what it's like swimming at water level, looking into a pipe barrel. Looks like Tyler Newton. This is Newt's yeah. in slow mo in that liquid cavern traveling through. Football. You can see the white water foam ball crashing off the bottom, and he avoids that. 
gets through another section, and this is how experts ride pipeline. It is just moving art right there. So beautiful. Check this out, Balaram stack. Slow-mo casual in a mm. pipeline barrel. Mr. Ball stack. Just dipping below right there, that curling lip. Oh, beautiful. Where is he? He made it. Dragging the body and dragging himself. This is Jesse Johnson. Found his way in and out of a pipeline barrel. Paid some dues out there in this heat, but this is a moment of glory for the young man from Kauai. Check this out, Rocky. Is that our friend Kato? Or Shota? Or Keto Matsuoka in the barrel. And he is doing it. Oh, look at that technique right there. In great style. This is either the 12 or the 10.5 that the he got. The 12 was bigger. Yeah, yeah 12 but was definitely bigger. This is going to be the... Admiring the technique there. Beautiful. The glitter. Oh, there's the steepness. This is the one <laughs> that all of you at home can just mind surf or... Stay away from it. You can still get injured mind surfing pipeline. <laughs> Look at that steepness, bro. In motion. Oh, that's what you look at from the channel. As a Grom, I looked at waves like that and guys taking off like, I don't understand how it's physically, humanly happening that they're making these drops that are just beyond vertical. Couldn't comprehend it until I paddled out there and got one and felt it and believe me, it uh, you do take your share of spills here at Pipe to get those barrels. It's uh, the payment plan we've been talking about. Well, we saw that slow motion water footage. A cubic foot of water, Rocky, is mm -hmm. about 72 pounds in weight. Okay. So, when you talk about that power at Pipeline, you can put that into your equation, and that is a lot of force coming down on boards, bodies, and the reef. I know, how many cubic feet are in a Pipeline lip? Oh my God, my head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I gotta tell myself, don't think about math, you're gonna give yourself a headache. Mahalo, Uyo Heenalu, see the trademark Petroglyph logo right there in the upper left of your screen. Mahalo to Freaks Store as well as Weed Maps. Thank you to all our great sponsors, Taro Brand and uh, Monster Energy, Kona Red, Aloha Salads, Aloha Alkaline. Ahi Assassins, we've got North Shore Shrimp Chuck providing lunch yesterday, little Jerry's Pizza, Konos, we got everybody taking care of us. Here we go, up and riding, taking care of business at Pipeline. Ayala Stewart. That's Ayala Dalla. You ran out of subjects, Rocky? I got more subjects then. Oh, I, you're quiet I, for a while. We're going to Sometimes we like new, to let it marinate, right? New, um, another Hawaiian word coming at you right now. And <laughs> that Hawaiian word is going to be onipa'a, to be steadfast, resolute, to push forward, onipa'a. Hiki, to be able to do, can do, hiki. We sometimes say hiki no. And also aloha. Aloha means hello, goodbye, as well as love. Mm -hmm. Mahalo, thank you, but mahalo can also mean respect. And so we mahalo people and we are respectful. Our Hawaiian tradition, when we enter a room, when we enter a party, 
we shake all the men's hand, and we honey, we kiss all the women, both our greeting when we enter. On the cheek. As well as Why when we... That? As, You're going to get as, somebody in trouble showing up to a party. It's on the cheek. <laughs> Common <Morning>. sense. <laughs> uh, as well as when we exit. So it's an entrance and it's an exit. Now, that is also the true when we look at Hawaiian chants. When we open up an event and we close an event, same thing. We open with the oli and we will close with the oli as well. So... The tradition now that you see is uh, played out, and that tradition of mahalo, that tradition of respect, comes all the way back from ancient Hawaiian days. Another theorem thrown out here by Professor Kaipo. Thank you, Kumu. Mahalo, Kumu. Uh, ole pilikia, I say, Rocky Cannon. No problem, bro. I got some more for you, too. That is uh, the your welcome. If you ever want to uh, express and uh, a phrase after mahalo, it's yeah. our ole pilikia, yeah, which we're gonna translate to literally no problem. Yeah, no problem. Um, I've heard uh, from uh, another auntie, yeah. uh, a shorter version of your welcome, mea li'i. Mea li'i, like yeah. Easy, small stuff. Small stuff, like easy kind. Easy, easily done. So. Mea, the word for things. Stuff. Things. Stuff. Yeah. Lee. Small. Small. Nui. Big. Big. Wanna say uh, aloha nui. Big aloha <laughs> to Crowley in uh, Ireland. Shout out to the Emerald Isle. Wow. Yeah. It's looking. Santa Cruz, but a John wanting to know how you bail, how do you fall in a closeout barrel? And uh, most surfers will just, you know, do that dive forward off the board so that it's all about getting penetration. That's what you want here at Pipeline. When you want to avoid getting thrown over and slapped down on the reef, your best chance of avoiding reef contact here at Pipe and Backdoor is to get penetration through the bottom of the wave and try your best just to pop harmlessly out the back. And um, it's quite a technique, and there's sometimes where it's unavoidable and impossible to get that penetration, but as much as you can, if you know you're going down, the next thing you hope for is that penetration through the bottom of the wave. If you don't get penetration, you will be picked up again as the wave curls over. It's like a big circular motion, so if you don't get penetration, you'll get picked up and slam back down again, and that's when that uh, impact to the reef is most likely gonna happen. Mahalo kaleo kili'i koa, and uh, we'll see you over at uh, Anakala Buffalo's meet, and uh, hopefully we can have you come up, kaleo, and speak a little olelo, and we're gonna check out this Instagram message right there, all in Hawaiian. Yes, beautiful. It's a, it's a paragraph. I like how uh, Mahalo, the Kaleo. different um, linguistic apps can allow you to add kahako, add okina, which oh. is basically apostrophe. That's not that hard, but the kahako, impressive to have that. Um, but, uh, your smartphone can be smart, too. Look them. I know. I'll tell you right there. It's, it's on your, you oh, can it hit it on, a, on your, um, you can hit it right here on your keyboard. Look at You just, you got to load the Hawaiian keyboard. Oh, okay. Ka Ka'ahua, that means space. I don't, I don't have a globe on my, oh wait, no, I don't, my, my phone is not that smart. Ka'ahua, I'm starting to space. Uh, realize. Justin Cote, giving some love. From Superbrand in uh, California, check it out. Pipeline Barrel. I think Takayuki got a wave. That was Wakita-san. And there he is, gonna be bailing the board, ducking under a replay of Takayuki Wakita right here, dropping in and knifing into this barrel rock. Yeah, good positioning for Wakita. He knows where to be. Just a matter of being able to handle all of that turbulence inside. And then you see a little bit of that imperfection 
in some of these waves of that clamping exit, not wide open. So tough luck there for Takayuki Wakita, but he'll get some Kokua. Actually, it looked like he broke his board or broke a leash. There he goes, game on, on the pickup. The veteran took his leash off right away for the grab. Yeah, man. Jonathan over there in Trinidad and Tob Tobago in the Caribbean, man. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate that, Jonathan, and uh, we know that you love the Hawaiian lessons, and we love that you're watching, man. Aloha. Yeah, mahalo oh, to the Tyler. But the question was, how do you qualify in. for the shootout? You got to be kind of hand selected. Yes, it's a special list. Yep. So there's actually the qualification is work your way up into the pipeline lineup. Yeah. Where you're legitimate enough to um, to get selected. Yeah, and. Um, it's no joke getting waves here on a uh, serious day at Pipe. And we had a question come in about the crowd. You know, on this kind of day, if there was no contest, you'll see it right after. It's going to be packed today with uh, at least 60 to 70 surfers and bodyboarders that will be uh, taken to Pipeline. And Tyler from um, Brevard County, Florida. Mahalo for the kind words. And... Um, how often do you see people get kicked out of the pipe lineup? And it can vary from day to day. Um, I feel like the introduction of multi-media cameras in every point of uh, not only positioned watching the waves, but everybody that is now a photographer that has a smartphone or any kind of phone in their hand those kind of public displays have uh, have quelled a little bit, but um, you know, getting your uh, getting your board adjusted by by somebody is still well within the realms of um, possibilities if you do the wrong thing here at Pipe, and uh, getting escorted back to the beach to make sure that you're not a hazard to everybody else uh, still can happen here. But in my day, I've seen a lot of people forced to leave the lineup. Yala Stewart dropping in, pipeline barreled, nice trim, behind the curtain comes out, and Yala Dalla cashing some checks. That's going to improve his scoring. <laughs> Got a question. Have, have you, Rocky, ever removed somebody from the pipeline lineup? And uh, we'll save that for a little bit later after we watch Ayala scream through this pipe barrel. Such a perfect positioning for that beautiful tube ride. Ayala going to get a good score, and he is stoked, feeling it. Um, but yeah, when you get dropped in on out here at pipe, uh, it's, uh, it's very disappointing <laughs> and upsetting, to say the least. And so there's some people that, whether or not they should be out there or not, that's a whole other story. But, um, you know, dropping in on pipe locals is definitely not recommended. And um, that can earn you a trip back to the beach. Flying over here, the conditions staying nice and buttery throughout the morning. Tide just about at the high point, but it's just a 0 0.66 foot tide for the high. We've had low tides throughout the whole day and big swells. It's made for extra hollow, extra hazardous pipeline, but it's been bringing us some exciting moments here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. And thank you to, uh, speaking of buttery, thank you to Buttery Avocado Yummy. for checking in and watching the show. Love me some avocado. The buttery avocado question is, uh, Rocky, maybe you can answer this. Are quads used often here at Pipeline versus thrusters? Uh, it's majority thrusters, um, like you talked about uh, a couple days ago, Kaipo, that three-fin design has just held so true and uh, has been you know, the fin setup of choice for most pipe surfers, but 
Uh, guys, namely like Nathan Fletcher, I think have opted for the four fin. Danny Fuller, I know, rides a four fin a lot, a quad fin. I know for sure when um, Mick Fanning was going for all of his world titles and his, yeah. his performances out here, he was often riding quads. Um, Julian Wilson would be another guy mm. who's on the quad setup. Um, but yeah, so mostly thrusters, some quads. You know, with the quad, you do have an extra fin in the water at all times. So Not a bad policy two here. Two fins on the <laughs> rail. Um, so yeah, I think it's personal personal preference, yeah. really. And it seems to be... Um, and the quad would go probably a little bit faster than the thruster, but sometimes you don't want to go too fast. Yeah, you need to get barreled, you know, to have success here, you need to be disappeared in the barrel and all that speed, you know, can sometimes be a detriment. You're exactly right, Kaipo. But when you look at 10 foot plus boards, often for big waves, the majority of those boards are gonna be quad setups for that extra fin in the water. Getting some fins in the water and just having to straighten out. That looked like Makai McNamara. Oh, that one buzz from above. Just a gnarly backwash on it that wouldn't let Makai really get a comfortable setting on his rail. Might have been barren, maybe. Uh -huh. That. Try to get you the correct ID. We're going to have another look at it on the replay, and it was Baron Mamiya. See, so just not able to get that rail comfortably set because that backwash came up mid face on him. And uh, when Eli was up here just during the last heat, we talked about, you know, the everything having to feel just right before you can commit to doing those kinds of things here at Pipeline. So, Baron wisely not trying to force it right there and avoids disaster. Here's our heat recap. With a little workout in the outdoor gym, right to the playground where the big boys are at the perilous pipeline. Check it out, Makai McNamara almost threading through. Ayala Stewart got a couple of nice rides and staying busy with Ayala Dala. A little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little more money. Flying above the North Shore here at the 2019 the Hui Backdoor Shootout. 
Out in the Waters team, Volcom, Kaimana Henry, Jesse Johnson, Balaram Stack, and Kalani Chapman for Team Volcom. I'm Kai Pugero along with Rocky Cannon, and we are in the Volcom house on the second floor balcony. That's our perch, that's our studio. Best office in the entire world. Thank you, Volcom, and um, Rocky, another great team on the water. Yeah, Team Volcom, we appreciate your hospitality for one, and we appreciate your charging and ripping of pipeline and backdoor. And the Balaram Stack been impressed with his uh, prowess here at Pipe, being from New York. And uh, Kaimana Henry's got some good waves of defending, uh, excuse me, a former champion of this event. Jesse Johnson, the new name of this group, busting onto the scene, paying some dues, but getting some sick barrels too. And that's, those two things are very impressive to watch here at Pipeline. Check it out, live action. Kalani Chapman, he's, he's also got a good impressive. resume. <laughs> <laughs> With that drop. So it looks like Kalani's changed boards uh, for today. We did have a question coming through on the, what size boards do you think most of the guys are riding today, Rocky? What would you guess? Uh, you know, kind of depends. We saw Baron Mamiya in the last seat as we watch a replay of Kalani Chapman. Right there, that board is probably in the 6-8 uh, range, under 7 feet. Baron Mamiya looked like he was maybe on like a 6-4. Probably a 6-4 for Baron you Mamiya. Know, um, At, uh, uh, some other guys might be on something as long as 7 or 7-2. Seven two, seven part oh. 2 of the question is, do people ride epoxy boards out here? Not usually. You want the weight yeah. of uh, the traditional polyurethane. Epoxy boards, in my experience, just for some of these North Shore waves, the heavier waves, especially the bigger waves, are just way too light. And they're too on top of the water, they're right? We get a lot of wind and, and current and everything over here. You know, I mean, you know, you, you can get an epoxy board made with the right rails yeah. to have it work for you, but, you know, I think majority of uh, the competitors in this event and uh, across our other North Shore events, too, are on the more traditional polyurethane uh, resin combo. Thanks, Kyle. Pretty funny picture there, sending over. Mahalo, appreciate that. Aaron Goodall saying Kaimana Chi. He's on the Kaimana Henry. He's cheering him on. Thanks for watching. Ch thanks for checking in. Final day of the Hui Backdoor Shootout. And uh, Jesse from New York talking about the uh, different faces and appearances of Pipeline and Backdoor. He's been here a few times and he says it's looked different every single time he's been here and um it's uh you're right man it's got sand moving around different swell direction to different things so good observation but a jesse in new york hey tracy in vegas checking us out thank you for watching tracy and uh you're on the ninth island over there in las vegas nevada so thanks for watching and uh we're just having such a good time Emerald Isle, North Carolina checking in. And how hard is it not to get knocked off of the board from some gnarly pipeline spit? It has knocked a lot of surfers out. Yeah, thank you for tuning in from uh, Emerald Isle, North Carolina. Aloha. Some of the surfers on the paddle here. You know what? We're going to check out, uh, see if there's going to be any rides right now. So we're going to watch this set. A uh, little bit of wind flaring up. Uh, hopefully it won't come up too much. Swell is still plenty strong. And this is Balaram Stack stacking some chips in that pipeline barrel greeted with some spit on the way out on the turnaround here and dropping into this this is jesse johnson and a big shower for jesse on the exit of a pipeline barrel and gets another little turn off the top just to add to his wave score jesse johnson a new name to us but he has been gaining respect and making a reputation for himself in the 2019 Dahui backdoor shootout. We'll check out some replays starting with Balram Stack here. Ball, double hand drag into the pit 
and spit through the exit. Jesse grabbing rail off the bottom, stalling in the back of his board, and a fountain of spit right behind Jesse. Nice little check turn off the top there. And as we come out of this replay, we're talking about Kalani Chapman, and I believe we have some footage of Kalani Chapman. That would be compliments of Ippo Films. And let's check this out. Kalani Chapman, pipeline, slow motion, and just a beautiful illustration of a well-defined pipeline technique. Look at the room inside of this barrel. Kalani Chapman, live action, switching to Kalani Chapman in a pipe barrel, and that one did not let him out. Clamped right at the end. So he came out of a water, slow motion replay. That was from yesterday from Ippo Films of Kalani Chapman, straight into some live motion of Kalani Boy on another bomb replay here. Take a look at this. And we're gonna slow it down just a sec for you folks. And you can see Kalani doing the stall. And unfortunately that wave just clamps on the end, not allowing Kalani to find an exit. And all of the water photographers diving towards the bottom. Kalani Chapman, great lineage. Brother Sean Briley was a legendary pipeline surfer still residing here on the North Shore of Oahu. His nephew, Isaiah Briley, I'm going to tell you, is a chip off the old block. Great surfer in his own right. And he is another developing talent here on the North Shore. Thank you for joining us. The Hui Backdoor Shootout 2019. This is round number six, the final round of competition. And this is the second to the last heat of the day. We're going to finish off the day with Team Quicksilver to finish off this round number six. We're going to do some math. And then we're going to be crowning a champ for the individual here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout, as well as a winning team. Myers Films bringing us a wonderful shot from up above. And the whole crew over at Salton Air Studios just doing an excellent job here. Ikaika David, Katie, as well as Mike on the mic. Mike Prickett is the boss man. And Freak Store is one of our supporters, along with Weed Maps and all of the Lima, all of the hands at the Hui O Heenalu. A lot of hands, a lot of good-sized hands out there. And um, mahalo to the hui. Yes, thank you so much. Beautiful day for this uh, day number five, finishing up here with round six. And the last couple of heats here, we're going to get this round six complete, and then we'll <clears throat> have our scores tallied together. and um, find out who will be taking home the big payday for the individual <laughs> award. Find out what team will be uh, running away with it. Is that what you said? Yeah, exactly. Cool. We're on the same page then. <laughs> People, <laughs> thanks for everybody to listening to it twice. We just saw just Jesse to, Johnson break, just so, uh, go in and out of a barrel in. there at, <laughs> for Team Volcom on your screen. And a replay, again, of Jesse's wave here. And unfortunately, was not able to find a way out. Just ran off a bit too quick for Jesse Johnson, but he's been charging through the entire event. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesse, um, thank you for your hospitality, specifically. His, uh, his bed's right, right back here. Yeah, we invaded. Sleep, so. Actually, the, Thank you, Jesse. The, the folks at Volcom have been really good. We set up a truck in the second floor bedroom, and our studio is out on the balcony. Yeah. It's been a wonderful experience here. And just a reminder to everyone, surf fans, 
January 29th through February 10th. Another event here at Pipeline that will be the Vulcan Pipe Pro. That generally is another event that's blessed with epic pipelines. So tune in and keep updated on the run days there. We're going to run four days of competition between January 29th and February 10th for that Vulcan Pipe Pro. Yeah, that'll be a great one. And uh, always some great barrels, some great carnage. You know, a lot of uh, important points and money on the line there. So it'll be an exciting event. Mahalo to Vulcan for taking that event yeah, now into its 10th year. So that's so awesome. Thank you, Kerry, for tuning in. The Mokuo Keave, mahalo. And um, go to Josh. I don't know if uh, the Pupukea Grill uh, Poke Bowl is going to last if I ship it over to you. Um, but uh, even though you're just right there in Ventura, hey, you know what? You can find Poke Bowls all over the place now. Uh, but yep, there's uh, some authentic ones here on the North Shore. Jason Jenks from Cape Town. And the best of luck on your surf session uh, for the sunrise, my brother. And Kristen, thank you for tuning in from North Carolina. How hard is it to get knocked off your board by this pipeline spit? It's not hard at all. It is so powerful. Uh, you really do have to hunker down uh, on most exits for that pipeline spit. Here we go. Knowing a lot about that is Kaimana Henry. Just kind of plays with that one. Look at this out the back. This one is stacking up. Drone shot coming into Kalani Chapman. And a big late drop for Kalani coming around the section with just a big shoulder, so he'll kick out, but made the drop look easy. That was not very easy. Good job of uh, being in control for Kalani Chapman. Washington State, but a Sean tuning in. Who will get the wave of the winter? Well, I think we have a good couple of entries from this event. Keito uh, Matsuoka is one of them. <laughs> that perfect 12 Here's for sure. Here's a replay for Kaimana Henry. And a big boy doing a big bottom turn. And just stalling right in the lip line right there. And then Kalani Boy, big steep drop. Made it look easy. And just kicked out after that wave shouldered off. And uh, once again, mahalo to all our great sponsors. Mahalo to and tribute to Duke Kahanamoku. And speaking of our perfect 12 and our entry into the wave of the winter, let's take a look. Once again, at the drone angle to the front angle of the perfect 12 by Keito Matsuoka, who just literally free fell into that barrel, somehow was able to miraculously set his rail at the bottom. This is the one I like right here. That's epic, man. Look at right there. He's like disengaged and then re-engaged. Over the boil. Right over the boil square over it. Look at the size of this thing. And then just motors into a gaper. So and many things could have gone wrong <laughs> right there, Rocky. And even prior to that, it's just like, like we mentioned yesterday, the miracle on ice. This is the miracle on surf. The way these guys are able to negotiate these waves at Pipeline, and there's your example of not a perfect 10, but even more better is a perfect 12. Yeah. <laughs> and Keito Matsuoka is stoked, splashing with joy, elation, still sinking in that he just did that, gets a pat on the back from a veteran water photographer who's seen many perfect 12s over the years. Brian Bielman giving Keito some congratulations right there in the final shot. But that would have to be one of the top entries, yeah, for the Wave of the Winter, for sure. Um, I'm saying for sure. Hey, wave of the Winter, you can catch up on that competition on surfline.com, one of our supporters here, and streaming the Hui Backdoor Shootout Live. And you'll 
keep tuned in to all the content on surfline.com and you'll see all of the entries into that competition which runs to the end of February, the wave of the winter. And Keito, Keito Matsuoka has put his number in the hat for the judges. A little bit of uh, rustling with our coconut leaves right now, not too bad. You can hear it in our mics just a little bit, that breeze that has puffed up just a tad. And um, Kaipo, we have uh, our sixth heat in the water, is that correct? We have our seventh heat in the water, I seventh believe. We just have water. one more heat to go after this. That would be Team Quicksilver to enter the water last on this round number six. If we can get through all eight of the teams, then we're going to add these points to the totals. If we have to call the competition off before the end of this round, then these numbers will not count. Well, and I think we're going to, at this point, looks pretty promising that we're going to progress through and um, get a complete round six to fit in there. And uh, thank you from the Netherlands, Diana, tuning in. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks curious of, uh, of the Wahine presence here at Pipe. Um, and they will have, um, you know, hopefully more opportunities in the future. But during the uh, events, during the end of the winter, they have an uh, expression session here. Um, would really love to see the full, you know, events at Haleiwa Sunset like we had before for the women um, during those events. Uh, but, you know, Moana Jones, one of the day-to-day the -day operators here at Pipe that has been getting some good ones. And um, Keala Kennelly, always a presence here. And uh, there's uh, some others that like to charge. And, uh, you know, Rochelle Ballard was one of those that could paddle out, grab rail it, and get pitted here at Pipe on any given day. Um, but this contest is uh, team surfing, all for the Kane, for the guys. And um, we're watching them here for Team Volcom paddle for a wave that looks like Kalani, we'll Chapman. To Kalani Chapman. Yep. Up in the barrel, just under the lip. Beautiful footage from above. We'll get another angle on that on the replay for Kalani Boy. But that was well done. Just snuck right underneath that lip and found an exit at a pipeline barrel. Here's the replay, Kalani Chapman. We're gonna check it out from the beach angle. And you see how he powered underneath the lip there, was able to pin dive off of the board, just dropping two feet, penetrating, and going complete on that ride, Kalani Boy Chapman. You're talking about women, and uh, yesterday we are talking about Hawaii great Hawaiian surfing women, and another name that came to my mind is Melanie Bartels. Yeah. Once on the championship tour from the west side and one of the most progressive female surfers I've ever seen. Melanie Bartels. And then we also think about great Hawaiian women surfers. I'm going to have to go three-time world champ. Carissa Moore with even more progression there. <laughs> Carissa Moore is uh, yes. consistently throwing down now those, you know, uh, air reverses yeah. all the time. I don't see her do it a lot in competition. I think 2019, we're going to see more of that stuff uh, coming from Carissa Morris. She could, she's going to seek a fourth world title. But a Gabe in Boise, Idaho. Thank you for the message. And <clears throat> talking about uh, waves in Asia, asking about Korea. And uh, man, there's some searching to be explored. Maybe Mason and the boys can go check that out. Looking at an approaching set. Some lines developing. And we'll be hitting the reef at Pipeline in just a second. Newport Beach tuning in. Thank you, Hayden. Kaipo, you spent some time living in California, asking about the uh, Californian surf culture and Hawaiians' opinions of it. But check out this backdoor wave that just gets the best of Jesse Johnson. That was an extreme wipeout. So we'll keep an eye. Jesse's already popped up. Let's see if the board's in one piece. 
Looks like the board's in one piece too, but now it's going to have to survive taking this on the head and taking this backhand barrel. Kaimana Henry tucks in and he's going to muscle Ooh. out of there. But that second section gets Kaimana. You know, it's so tricky there sometimes because we talked about the high line exit and that little trap door sometimes that you got to find as the wave bends out. But then it'll trick you like this right here. Kaimana going for the high exit but then the bottom drops out from under you. It's like, Pipeline, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I go here, you go there, you say do this, I do that, and then you go there and say that, and then it's a little frustrating. But uh, Kaimana looks to be okay, but seeking that high line exit got uh, kind of lured up to that trap door, and then next thing you know, the bottom drops out, and uh, you're like, you got a false bottom. <laughs> you just <laughs> drop right down, you're like, okay. Pipeline, you win. And seeking enlightenment, wisdom, education, Imi Na'au Ao is you know, going to be the Hawaiian phrase for that. And <clears throat> being a pipe surfer, uh, or, you know, if there's any aspiring pipe surfers out there, it is uh, all starting with that phrase right there. Imi Na'au Ao. Seek the knowledge. That means to, you know, kind of know before you go. I, sound, I know that sounds a little cliche-ish, but it is a, a valid statement. And, um, you know, watching the waves, studying it, whether it's from the beach or from the channel, uh, picking the right days to be out there so that you're not putting yourself or others uh, at risk. Very important, but it's all going to begin with that imi na'o, seeking knowledge about this place. Well, Rocky, it looks like we're about under a minute away from the finish of this heat and the finish of the time in the water for Team Volcom. Yeah, and we are just going to escape by the hair of our chinny-chin-chin, it looks like, in the way of uh, the oncoming um, Kona winds that are now making a little bit more uh, impact here. Yeah, Kona winds is what we call winds from the southwest direction. And a little bit of that Kona wind is kicking up and um, kicking out is Team Volcom. So their 25 minutes are up. Yeah, and I uh, imagine we're gonna have the quickest turnaround possible to get Team Quicksilver started. But before we do that, we'll check out what happened in heat number seven for Team Volcom, Kalani Chapman. Free fell into that nice little pipe wave. Balaram Stack getting some high praise from Kainoa McGee for those waves right there. And the Jesse Johnston looking stylish, just dropping the knee right in time to get enough stallage for that pipeline barrel. Kaimana Henry, your former champion, just playing with this one. More action coming your way. Quicksilver will be in the water when we return.
right, aloha, e komo mai, e hoi mai. Welcome back to our last team of the Hui Backdoor Shootout for 2019. It's Team Quicksilver. That's Cole Rothman right there with just a straight hander. Not much he could do about that. Joining him out there is Reef McIntosh, Ryder Guest, and Joey Johnston. So this is heat number eight, round number six, last heat for this 2019 backdoor shootout. It's been a wonderful five days. We started out with longboarding, stand-up paddle surfing, some body surfing way back last Friday. Kind of had to wait till the end of the holding period to get the right swell, get the right swell direction, the favorable wind, but it's all come together to give us a really epic days, epic few days of competition. Like I said last Friday, starting with that longboarding, stand-up paddle and body surfing. Took a day off and then came back on Sunday running round one of the men's shortboard team surfing. And then on Monday, we were able to get two rounds in as well as yesterday and finishing up today on our final day of the holding period, January 16th. And uh, everything's worked out great to complete six rounds. Team Quicksilver in the water right now. Rocky Cannon with Kaipo Guerrero. Yeah. Had a couple of special guests joining us throughout the broadcast. And uh, everybody's been really fun to be around. It's been a value packed <laughs> four days, five days of surfing. But especially when we got into this team competition, the last three days, I'm going to say a, a value package of barrels, both at pipeline and back door. Yeah, I mean, uh, our price of admission, can't complain about that. Free or 93. The front row right here, and you guys tuning in right online, we appreciate that very much, and even on Spectrum Surf TV. But yeah, over the course of this team event, we've seen um, so many barrels, so many great scores. Looking forward to the uh, post-production packages that we'll put together and get out to you guys in the coming days. But man, live action here, Team Quicksilver. That Kona win is now turned it into more of a, a bit of a steady breeze. And it's only going to get stronger as the day goes longer. So we are going to be uh, running this heat all the way through, but really trying to fit everything in before the real gusts start to blow. But so best wave totals coming up here on a graphic that we'll show you. Looking at the beautiful mountains there and best single wave is uh, what we're showing you here. And it was uh, Keito Matsuoka with the 12. Tyler Newton with his name on there twice for an 11.5 and a 10.5. Koa and Shota both with scores over 10 points, 10, 6, 7, and 10.5 respectively. A 10, 1, 7 for J-O-B. Kalani, Kalani Chapman with an even 10. And a trio of 9.83s. Tyler Newton on that board again. So there's his three waves that we can see plain in sight. Tyler Newton's name is on that board three times. He's looking pretty good. I'm going to use my <laughs> sense of deduction and think that he's <laughs> likely to win this. <laughs> wow, what an impressive victory it would be for Tyler Newton. And, you know, well-deserved and uh, great timing for Tyler. Now you can really, you know, the ambiance of the waves, the beach crowd you can hear through your microphone, but also this uh, steady Kona breeze that's creeping into our balcony area, uh, very audible on the microphone. So just uh, bear with us there as we wrap up. It's the win, Rocky. The 2019 it's... backdoor shootout. I'll keep talking. Go. You are saying it's the win? Makani. Yes, the win. word. Makani. I think uh, our colleague and co-host Isaiah Walker has a son named Makani. There's, uh, looks like Joey Johnston. And Joey Johnston almost getting a little bit short leash right there, but you gotta get one more, a little bit more long. That board almost went stab you in the back. But there's the trees moving, texture 
on the surface of the ocean. Nice uh, wind block technique you got going there. Nobody can see me, Rocky. Mm -hmm. They only see what's on the screen. Uh-huh. And what they see on the screen is some ruffle on the water. Yeah, looks like uh, blue ruffle potato chips. And there's the indicator of the wind. Along with the coconut leaves, we have our beach warning signs telling everyone entering down that path. Dangerous conditions. Swim at your own risk. No swimming. Look out. Just watch. Stay mm -hmm. high. Stay dry. Stay alive. Calgary, Alberta, Canada tuning in. Arf, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, we did talk about yesterday some of that bond between uh, Aotearoa and Duke's visit to New Zealand to spread the, the joy and art of surfing. And, yeah, there's a strong correlation with the language between the three corners of the Polynesian Triangle, Hawaii, Tahiti, and New Zealand. So thank you for that question, Brother Jay. <laughs> Brother Greg wants to, to know, <laughs> does it matter who wins and where the after party will be? <laughs> and uh, checking out the current party right there at Pipeline, that's Koa Rothman, I believe. Yeah, Koa. And Koa making it count. That was technical barrel riding at its finest. Three section barrel ride with the crumble, having to negotiate in there, changes line a number of times. And you can see why Koa Rothman's the top of the list when it comes to pipeline surfers. Replay Koa's in there, changes the line, has to get higher there, goes through that second section wow. and comes out. Hmm. That was, uh, you know, for the scoring purposes, you know, we saw uh, Kato with that perfect 12, but the way the waves and conditions are right now and the skill that it required for Cole right there, I could give him a 12 for that. Well, we got a great <laughs> panel of judges with Pancho Selvin, Miles Padaka, Flynn Novak, as well as Love Hodel, and I'm sure those judges under, you know, their expert eyes are going to recognize the challenges as well as you know, the technique that Cole Rothman had to have to make it through those sections and award him appropriately. Well, speaking of after parties, between those two houses right there, uh, no matter who wins or who's in the water, uh, you can always count on one of those or both to be uh, having <clears throat> some sort of gathering. And uh, taking a look at our judges area, right in front of the uh, Quicksilver yard. Thank you very much for the hospitality as well. Team Quicksilver, they're in the water right now. And uh, Cole Rothman's probably got a good score coming. That could be one of his keepers. As he- uh, I think so. <laughs> is gonna potentially put that one on the board. And no indication yet from the judges for uh, Cole Rothman. We'll keep you updated. And uh, that's Reef McIntosh right there on a frothy one. Yeah, Reef knows what to do in any conditions here at Pipe, but that uh, Kona win really making its presence felt. Looking at back door, I think that's Cole. Kainoa begging, please come out. Got to say good morning and welcome to Brother Isaiah Walker. Hello, Isaiah, huh? good morning. Good morning. Sorry I missed out on the action. I pulled up and just the, I guess I brought the wind with me. Uh, you know, it got here a little bit before you, but here, yeah. check out that back door wave. Was that Cole? I or don't, Ryder? I don't know, but I do know that Cole Rothman on that technical pipeline barrel scored a 10. So reporting back to you, we saw that two-section barrel for Cole Rothman. And uh, the judges did, as we anticipated, uh, to award him for the technicality of that barrel ride. 
gave him a 10. So Cora Rothman, that's going to be a keeper for him. Again, I, Dr. Isaiah Walker is joining us. He's been uh, a great addition to the team here, uh, giving us a lot of history lessons about Duka Hanamoku, uh, as well as we've been speaking Olelo Hawaii, as well as um, a lot of surf history. So thanks for being back up here. Isaiah, of course, Rocky Cannon, he's always here. And here's the book. And the Waves of Resistance has made it into the booth. And um, be sure to check out yeah. uh, a copy of that. We're talking about cool hairdos on the cover oh, of this one. Oh, yeah. uh, Larry Bertelman. The Rubber Man. Larry Mehau Bertelman, one of my favorite Hawaiian surfers oh, of man. all time. And uh, I got a Larry Bertelman story if no one takes off on this next wave. Well, the camera's on us, so I might as well tell the story. Yeah. Oh, no, it's on the waves. Now I'm going to tell the story. It's a, it's a quick one. When I was a kid, we were always wondering how he made so much speed gyrating down the line and, and how he was able to pump and generate his own speed. And Larry gave us a very, very simple technique. He said, go on a slight hill and tic-tac on your skateboard uphill. And that's how you're going to... Tic-tacking on your skateboard uphill is how you're going to develop being able to gyrate in turns and make speed through flat sections. And I thought that was brilliant coming from Larry Bertelman. And it came from Larry Bertelman, so mahalo, Larry. Right on. Does it work? Yeah, dude. Okay. Have you seen how fast I go, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me right now? I thought, that, I thought, that, was just, I thought that was just naturally <laughs> attained. So you no, did uh, train going uphill. Tic-tac uphill. All right. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to also thank um, all my Brazilian friends that have been tuning in. Obrigado. Valeu. You've got a gazillion Brazilian friends. I hope to be back there, you guys. Uh, uh, Sakurema, I think, is in June, but I'm hoping to come back. I got a lot of Brazilian friends. Yeah. Cool. It's a good time, bro. Like, I, people think, I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, it's not pipeline, but Brazil's got some great waves. Yeah. Huh. Super fun beach breaks and uh, any reef breaks there? Oh, reef breaks, point breaks. Wow. There's some, and there's some big waves. I mean, mm. where we go in Sakurema, this is where um, Chumbo is from, Lucas yeah. Chianca. There's a, you'd like it, Rocky. There's a giant left. Cool. Out there. It's like real deal. And pretty warm water? Warm water. Yeah. 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 Sh Temperate. Short, short on full, maybe, the yeah. coldest. Yeah. Anyway, we need a little rubber right now because the <laughs> Kona winds are kicking in. But the good thing, Isaiah, is that um, people are still attaining really good scores because Cora Rothman got a 10. And I'm going to let you view this one, Isaiah. What do you think about this? Yeah, cool. So he pedals into it. And even though the wind, the Kona winds was on it, he still <laughs> managed to milk that way, go all the way through that last section and come out the doggy door right before it shut down. So a lot of skill required there. Yeah, 10.0 and a double digit keeper score for Cole Rothman. And, um, you know, just a moment ago, they showed the uh, best single waves of all of our surfers. And guess whose name was on that list three times of a list of like the 12 best scores we've seen all event. Somebody's name was there three times, which is a great indicator. Is it Tyler? It is Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Newton. He had the 11.5, he had the 10.5, and his previous high score was a 9, but this morning he got a 9.83 to oh. just up it a little bit. Right. So on. they showed his name uh, for that 9.83. They showed his name right there in the middle of the pack with the 10.5. Here we go up and riding. Oh. Tough one there is that Kona win looked like it might have affected the drop, and that's... Uh, you know, what can make pipes so dangerous with these winds are those uneven and fluttering lips that are already very steep. And you sprinkle some crumbly Kona's on it. Kona's on it. And oh, man, it gets very dangerous. Oh, but oh. somebody going for this one. I was talking to uh, my brother Sione out there in the parking lot. Yeah. I was out telling him about the winds. I was like, hey, Sione, Kona winds, huh? He says, yeah, I think so. I think Kona rain, too. <laughs> so Samoan joke. <laughs> and, I'm trying and, to keep up with you guys. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah's from the east side, so he can tell oh, that. You know what I mean? Because that's his hood right there. Yeah, my, my wife is Afakasi Samoan. There you so, go. All right. Uh, yeah. Siva Siva Maya. Just Samoan Siva, by Siva. relation. <laughs> <laughs> I, <think that's> 
I love it. There's a kind, kinder word like relation. Talofa. <laughs> Talofa, everybody watching out there in Samoa. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, interesting perspective from, um, you know, people wondering about the wave riding and, and um, surfing down in the southern Pacific Islands. Yeah, we did have questions about that. And so you guys, when we look at the numbers coming through here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout, here are our single best wave scores. And as Rocky was talking about, you can see Tyler Newton there with a 10.5 and 11.5, as well as a... Um, a 983. A 983. Jamie O'Brien's on there twice. Nice. But Keito Matsuoka has uh, the best omiyagi he could ever get oh. uh, from the North Shore and Pipeline. A perfect 12-point ride and a wave that's gone absolutely viral. If you're a surfer and you haven't seen that wave, just please get, find some Wi-Fi. Log on to the internet anywhere or any social media, and you'll see that Keito Matsuoka 10-foot bomb. Yeah, I'm not as much of an avid social media guy as, as maybe you guys are. You got a bunch of are, followers yesterday, I didn't Dr. Even, Walker. I, di I didn't even know what it meant. There was this number, was like <laughs> 81. There was a number 80, and I, was, and I was like, what is that? Oh, that's how many people want to be your friend. I was like, I don't even know them. <laughs> but uh, I have to say, I, I, I started to look, you know and you're them. right. Uh, that wave is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it made me proud to be able to say that I was in here yeah. when it happened. We saw it. And live. not only that, but... I, I, I was watching the replay, and I said, right after he came out, I was like, that was a wave of the winter. Yeah. Nice. Uh, kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... Uh, you know, we had a question we... about that, of any of these uh, potentials, and that one for sure, for sure is up on the list. And Isaiah, I actually, you know, I was one of those followers. I started following you. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we known so, each other? So now I'm, now I'm just, you know, now I'm <laughs> tracking you. Oh, just because I like to know people in per Like, hey, well, honestly, you guys, if I already know you in person, sometimes I'm not going to follow you because I already can talk to you. And, uh, <laughs> but that's the weird thing sometimes about social media. A nut on the flip side is there's somebody you might not really even know, but then they kind of know everything about your life. And you turn around the corner, and here's a person who's like, oh, my gosh, I'm glad that you're feeling better. You got the stitches out, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, Great. how do you know all of that about yeah. me? And then you're like, oh, of course. Yeah. Social it's, media, so it's, it's new public. communication that we're getting used to, but we can spread some good stuff, and that's what we've been doing. I was telling Rocky, Isaiah, um, I got 170 messages yesterday through the day and into the evening, and I still got about 20 to answer. <laughs> and but probably more adding up today. Everybody was giving aloha. And, I'm and piha appreciating. Pu piha puuvai. My, uh -huh. my heart is so full, and you have gotten so many accolades on the depth that we've brought to this show and this broadcast and this surf competition because it's been layers of information, not just surfing, and, and that yeah, people wow. have been appreciating it's that. Been I was tripping out really your friend Ronnie Blakey uh, friended me. I was like, oh, wow, that must legit. be cool. I'm now legit. you're legit. <laughs> Ron Dog Blakey friend, friended you? You know what he's going to do? And Ron, you can't do it, brah. I am the trademark Hawaiian. He's going to, like, watch uh, your stuff. I have then. a real job. I got to... No, no, no. <laughs> He's, he's going to get the Hawaiian stuff from you. Oh, oh good, nah, good, nah, good. Nah, nah, it's all, it's all, It's all research. Ron Dog Blakey, a uh, great part of legendary uh, surf commentator, former magazine editor as oh, well. Yeah. Great surfer in his own right. His brother Vaughn's going to be here for the Vulcan Pipe Pro starting January 29th through February 10th, yeah. the next competition at Pipeline. Uh, I also have to shout out, uh, the, if you like all, a lot of the stories we've been talking about, um, there's a lot of, lot of Hawaiian history books that, that you can turn to. I mentioned yesterday our class was reading from a book, Noi Noi Silva. Um, also, there's a guy named Keanu Sai who's done a lot of great research talking about um, you know, the technical terms within the, this occupation's overthrow and the, kind of looking at the legal history of it. Also, there's, there's a great book called Waterman, which is a pretty good comp comprehensive uh, book on, on Duke Hanamoku. And it's a journalist who wrote it, not a Hawaiian historian. He did a, did a really good job. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the Duke, that's a good source. Although I did have one, I mean, a couple of uh, critiques of that particular one. One of them is the author, and, and, and I think maybe because, he, you know, he's not a Hawaiian historian, but 
refers to the annexation of the overthrow of Hawaii as inevitable. Mm. And I have to tell you, uh, I'm really tired of, of hearing that because Hawaii, when it, in 1898, when it becomes occupied, its government occupied, by that point, this was at the end of that whole push for empire building. At this point, the British Empire is almost already giving back. Mm. A, there's a lot of decolonizing yeah, going on. Colonialism is kind of going out of style. Yeah, and if you look at um, like all the other islands in the Pacific, they were colonized many, many uh, decades earlier. Like in the earlier 1800s, you have, you have uh, Tahiti by the French. Right. You, you have the British colonizing of uh, Fiji and um, all these other islands. In fact, Tonga is the only kingdom that manages to, to remain independent but, throughout but, the whole but era. But with your point, um, the annexation or the occupation of Hawaii was less about colonization and more about economics. And we, you know, for, for a lot of, I think an economics was a major part of that, and, and, and we do know that sugar was a big industry and that was a big business, but I think in actuality it was mostly about military... Strategic uh, positioning. Strategic, strategic Which it positioning. continues on to today. Yeah. Um, but especially... We I should have this, a fly-by uh, any time now, by the way. They can hear <laughs> us. They're I, the military, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you know what's the trick about blast. the military? It's like they're, they're blind in plain sight. Like, we, we know they're here, they're everywhere, but we sort of sort of don't don't recognize well it's you know it's trip. it's uh it, especially us growing up here you know long before we came into you know this world it's been going on so it's just you know been a part of our world for so long that uh it's just really really comes with the territory i feel like and look at that coming with some pipeline territory covering some ground yeah joey that johnson but a joey you want you want to watch me get on the list real quick you know why you don't see him a lot they have underground tunnels over here. Oh, now yeah. I just put myself on the list. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's OK. I was I, already on the list. What I hear, and I know. What I hear a lot of those people say, like, well, the Japanese would have taken over. Mm. And I have to say this. As we look at a replay of Joey Johnson getting shacked. Yeah, Joey Johnston, part of a great surfing ohana, and uh, carrying on the Johnston name for North Shore surfers. So back on subject. The, the reason why I per I personally disagree with that is because David Kalakaua, the king of Hawaii, um, tried to get Japan uh, to to have a better, stronger relationship because he saw that um, the U.S. Uh, that and its particular individuals in, in the sugar industry were were kind of taking a lot of power. Yeah. So he wanted to balance that he power. To balance huh? that. So he tried. Uh, he even sent uh, two of his well, one niece and one nephew. <clears throat> Uh, Jonah Kuhio, which we've talked a lot about today, sent him to, to Japan to live there. And he wanted him to marry, like, some prominent Japanese woman. Yeah. And also Princess Kaiulani. He tried to, like, arrange a marriage with one of, like, a, a Japanese high-ranking prince because he was really looking for the Japanese. But they actually didn't really want to do that uh, at that time, which is cool because we have a Japanese contingency here today. And Hawaii does have this long history with Japan including that story of, of David Kalakaua, the king of Hawaii. More knowledge getting dropped by Dr. Walker. And uh, yeah, we do have a big Japanese influence here. Guys, we've got less than five minutes in this heat, the final heat of the day for Quicksilver. Oh, yeah, well, that's less than five minutes. So we're down to 30 seconds as I'm hearing from the truck. And I'm hearing actually the countdown. So that's going to be it for Quicksilver. And that's it for Cole Rothman, Reef McIntosh, Joey Johnson, Ryder Guess. Now it's time to bust out the calculators, guys, mm. or the abacus, or whatever we're going to use here, and uh, figure out our points and figure out our t winning team and our winning individual at the 2019 The Hui Backdoor Shootout. But first, let's talk us through the recap, Rocky. And uh, well, this heat, you know, the last heat of the day, they drew the uh, number eight out of the hat for Team Quicksilver. And uh, fortunately, they were still able to find some meaningful scores, namely this 10-point ride from Koa Rothman weaving through that triple section. Banger at pipe, Joey Johnston also getting a wave. Little break, but we'll be back to wrap it all up on the post show.
Here from the North Shore of Oahu, flying high up above the 2019 Dahui Backdoor Shootout, an event that is going to go down in history books because it has been an absolute, it's been incredible, it's been awesome, it's been scary, <laughs> it's been inspiring, it's been the Dahui Backdoor Shootout, Kaipo Guerrero, along with Rocky Cannon and Dr. Isaiah Walker. And uh, it has been my absolute pleasure to be hosting this as well um, with my co-MCs here. And um, my heart is full. Piha pu'uvai on all the good messages that you've been sending in. We appreciate that. Rocky. Yeah, a lot of great feedback and uh, appreciation from our viewers. We thank you guys so much. Uh, the appreciation is definitely mutual. And uh, mahalo to surfline.com. Spectrum Surf TV, Explore.org, YouTube, thehui.com, all the places you can catch this broadcast and potentially more. We've got uh, some folks working on the numbers. We can uh, share that with you when we know. We uh, had a great full six rounds of shortboard team surfing competition, Isaiah, and uh, sprinkling in that manao. <laughs> the history and the knowledge. That's what I want to hear from Dr. Isaiah That's Walker is actually um, the bigger message that we want to commute here oh. at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Well, we, uh, we're basically, we've kind of tricked you. We've tricked you all. <laughs> you thought you were going to just learn about surfing today and this whole week. We've had a great, as you said, just like five, six days of just <laughs> awesome <laughs> waves. Uh, but in the meantime, we educated you with some history about Hawaii, about language, about culture, about Dukanamoku, and about many other Hawaiian surfers, Kanakas, mm. who've been surfing here for generations. So it's been, it's been fun. I, I love that, uh, Isaiah, we've tricked you. But I think it's kind of like what we did was we put, you know, sugar in the medicine because we, go. we, we got you here with big barrels and the entertainment. And then, you know, we fed you some medicine, but everyone feels better because of that medicine, yeah. because of that knowledge. I'm telling you right now, it has been nothing but positive, every single message. And uh, Isaiah, you brought a level of depth that we normally don't see in any um, surf competition. So it's been such a good one. So here's the thing. If you've watched the entire thing, I'll give you two credits of university credit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you drop out of school or whatever, yeah. just know you went college this week. All yeah. right. Learning and having fun at the same time. Hey, that's a great combination. That's how we like to bring it for this Hui Backdoor Shootout. Looking at some fluid vision courtesy of brother Larry Haynes. That looks like one of our Moniz's. Getting uh, nice and low, contorting the body on the bottom turn and then sticking it right in the pit. Where he needs to be, looks like Seth Moniz, gonna be uh, our newest Kanaka Maoli on the championship tour come 2019. He's gonna start working in a couple months down in Australia, but right now he is enjoying some time in the pipeline office right there with one of the best views that you can get of pipeline looking right in. Beautiful vision, big spit, Seth Muniz with the exit. 
Yeah, so it's cool to see, and we talked about this before, about this event. We get to have, you know, a lot of local surfers, a lot of native uh, Hawaiians that are, are allowed to surf pipe the best days of the year. Yeah. And and we, we talked about kind of the how it helps some people even, like, buy homes and stuff. <laughs> With the down payment, first place prize, that could be... Uh, a nice one, but that was Bruce Irons right there doing what he knows how to do best, which is get a pipe barrel on his backhand. Yeah, we see Mike Kailoa, very good for Bruce Irons, and let's check out this vision here of a Kanaka Maoli. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe this is Seth Moniz once again. Love that technique, getting really low, and then pulling up high at the end to avoid that foam ball from inside of the barrel. Amazing to see and stoked also to see that uh, we'll have we'll have Seth joining Brother Zeke Lau out there on the tour yeah. and John John and some of the other surfers from Hawaii. He can know. He we can know, know he can do mm -hmm. it. And so that's going to be the one of the chants for Seth Moniz in 2019 as he enters the championship tour. We're just going to keep on saying, he can know, Seth. He can yeah, know. Yeah, I hope that uh, he's coming through one of these pipe barrels in about 10 months or 11 months time with uh, something valuable on the line for Seth Moniz. Such a great kid, the Moniz family. We've had questions about the Moniz Ohana and expanding on what they do, you know. Uncle Tony, just a, an amazing surfer in his own right. Auntie Tammy, just a great parenting combo of those five children. The Moniz clan, incredible. Well, and they are going to Ho'omau to preserve and to perpetuate and to continue in a the tradition of Heenalu, of surf riding the Moniz Ohana. As we look at more action, how nice is this one, Isaiah? So beautiful. Taking this drop, it looks like Cole Rothman? I think so, Team Quicksilver for sure. We've seen Cole have a lot of great rides, oh, even oh, in that oh, last oh. heat, got a 10-point ride, and look at how deep, heavy, we've seen a lot of heavy surf this week. Yeah. Pick one. Looking over the ledge, oh my. Oh, yeah. Is this the 12? It might be one of our Japanese competitors. I'm not sure if that is the 12 in particular. Nope. Uh, but I believe that was the man who earned the 12. I believe that was Keito Matsuoka. Hi. Look at this. Oh, beyond vert. That's the feeling from the water. And you can see the thickness of pipeline. Yep. And yesterday, we saw surfers in the afternoon sitting way outside on the second reef. So what you're seeing here is a roll-in. A lot of them had to negotiate. Here we see Jim drag that inside rail. I believe this is um, Tyler Newton. Tyler Newton. That's right. Who Newt. seemed to be the magnet of the bombs in this event. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, like I said, the calculators are out. The abacus is out. All of them. Lots of people are, Lao Lima, we have many hands right now up, you know, if, if we don't have batteries, just to figure out. Yeah, stand in line and uh, stick up your fingers and I'll count your fingers all the way across. <laughs> well, Tyler Newton, we know for sure, is throwing away a nine point ride. He's not even counting one of his really good waves. So you yeah. nailed it right there, Isaiah. He has been the magnet. Seems like every round, Tyler has gotten something significant. And it's cool because there, I mean, because there was a, there was the, the athletes were trying to decide, should we go with top three waves, top four waves? But I think if Tyler walks away with this, either way, three or four waves, he would have uh, secured some of those best spots. That drop was incredible. We saw that uh, yesterday, that big bomb. Unfortunately, I think Landon uh, got injured also. Yeah, he rolled his ankle in this heat, um, but he's going to be right back up right back out at pipeline in no time and in a couple weeks he's gonna be dropping another album landon mcnamara yeah he's not only gonna be shredding the pipe waves he's gonna be blasting over your radio waves look at this section dropping that new album pretty soon kalani oh. boy wow yeah kalani did really good yesterday too driving i believe this was a nine point and change for that score Cool how these athletes are warriors. We're talking a lot about Hawaiian warriors this week, and to go out there and to tackle these massive waves, especially for some of these guys who've been, you know, injured and really life-threatening with Kalani, for example, yeah. and get back out there. 
and like charge. this guy, ankle brace on. <laughs> It's still battling through. Rocky, favorite nickname for this guy again? Ball stack. <laughs> Balram stack. Yeah. To drop in on some of these waves, you need a stack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to give a big, big mahalo to Fluid Vision and Larry Haynes, as well as Ipple Films, for providing us with this in water cinematography. I want to say mahalo to the Hawaiian Water Patrol all week long doing a, a super incredible job not only with the safety of our surfers but providing us with the constant action by getting them back out to the lineup efficiently and safely huge mahalo hawaiian water patrol boys you guys shined this week thank you so much for everything you do each and every event but especially here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Look at how perfect. There were so many amazing waves that will be photographed <laughs> and, and, and displayed everywhere on Instagram and magazines and so forth. And that's one of the cool things about this event, right? They're, they're surfing without jerseys on. Yeah. And so they have that opportunity to, to double dip, I guess you'd say, to for use sure. this for sponsors and for other venues. Whereas usually when you're in a jersey, that's not really an opportunity. Yeah, you got other company logos on that jersey of uh, the sponsoring event. So, you know, sponsors sometimes tend to uh, not want to use those shots. But here at the Hui Pactor Shootout, you can get uh, the ultimate payoff or uh, be responsible for the ultimate payment. We're going to have right a there paying some bills. <laughs> Billy Kemper, we're going to have a lot of shots from this this year's shootout. We're going to yeah. get a lot of images from these last five days of competition. Yeah, all the teams represented here, thank you so much. And uh, you're gonna get a lot of great content to use for your advertising campaigns from this one great event. And our camera guys had to earn their payment this week, didn't they? Yeah, I, all every those time photographers in the water. I, I looked over my shoulder almost every day, every like set that came through, those guys were trying to survive. I yeah. Mean, diving I mean, under these closeouts, and it was, whew, they earned their stripes in this event as well. Bruce Irons. Well, and you know, you, you uh, appreciate so much, you know, what Eddie and the, and the whole entire Huyo Heinalu does to put this event together, and the residual effects, and the ripple effect of, you know, these athletes are gonna have images to use. They're gonna be able to pick up, you know, some photo incentives along the way. We talked about that, you know, how, how pro surfers earn some of their, their bills is by getting those photo incentives that come on days like these. With an event like this, putting it on, it really just gives them a great opportunity. And the photographers themselves, they'll be able to, to market and sell these photos. So it's a, you know, everybody prospering from this event. It's really, I love the water angles because what happens is it really shows the size and the thickness of the waves. Some, sometimes this gets lost when we're flying up above <laughs> or when we're on land with our land cameras, checking all of these water images out. Just shows you how gnarly these waves were, how much water was moving, how thick the lips were, how big the waves actually are. Yeah, that gives you a real sense of uh, perspective looking from this angle right into it. And you said what, 72 gallons per square foot? Or no? 72 pounds. 72 pounds per square foot. Of water. Of water of force. So, man, I don't care if you do math with an abacus or a calculator, or like me, don't do math at all. It's still heavy. It's <laughs> heavy. <laughs> Yeah. Truly heavy water. And it is, like you say, I, I like what you said, Kaipo, you really get a sense of, you know, what they're seeing, what our athletes are seeing out there. Because from a distance, we're safely sitting over here and being armchair surfers. But man, it takes a lot of guts. And, you know, my hat goes off to these guys. I'm literally not wearing my hat today because of the, <laughs> you took the, it off already. the courage that uh, I saw on display here. Not just in catching the waves, but finding the position. We saw so many people, just almost every competitor getting caught inside nonstop. There was, I mean, we're talking third reef sets, wash throughs from the second reef, a lot of bravery displayed in this event. Yeah, we had Eli Olsen up here, uh, guest appearing for us in the booth and talking about the few times to, uh, you know, during this event, he himself bounced off the reef couple of scrapes and bruises and we saw Kaibi Barry he actually had to get stitches in one of his cuts and he was out there again today with stitches 
in his face, dropping in on some ledgy ones even today at uh, during his heat. And, you know, Landon, of course, rolling his ankle. So there's been a couple of, uh, you know, bumps and bruises and scrapes. And I was telling Eli, I bet every single of these 32 competitors over these days has bounced off the reef a couple of times. Oh, my gosh. That camera is like, help! A <laughs> uh, couple of... Uh, Stent Juniors right there. Wearing the Louis shots. Rothman Juniors. <laughs> oh boy. There goes a tripod. I'm kind of reminiscent of some <laughs> stories of when the Louis first started, what they thought of cameras on the waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. Oh yeah. That's a blast from the past right there. <laughs> and the future generations coming up. Still doing it. <laughs> Beautiful drone shot. Yeah, so you know what? A lot of um, questions about mm. the history of the Huyo Heenalu. And uh, we're going to throw to a piece right now. And you can learn about the creation of the group of surf riders, the Hui Heenalu. Let's check it out. Surfing Hawaii's gift to the world of sports. It really is something that emanated from these islands with Aloha and went around the world. Where sometimes the, the spirit of the surfing has been lost because of corporate involvement or guys surfing because they want to go, you know, make all this money, get famous, go on the world tour and stuff, which is not a bad deal. By the time 1976 rolled around, it was time to organize a circuit. We created the circuit and uh, called it the International Professional Surfing. It was a cooperative effort between surfers and contests to try to advance the concept of professional surfing. IPS and professional surfing, it just brought more uh, more people here, you know, wanting to come to Hawaii and surf the Seven Mile Miracle. I can remember when we'd be surfing that guys would kick us out of the water, you know, because they're going to hold a contest. Corporate sponsors they come in and think they can just come by and uh, drop money and monopolize our culture because what was happening on the, the north shore outsiders coming here and and treading on our our, our place and being uh, disrespectful you know to the locals out here to the people out here north shore was, at one time it was running amok we formed our club to let them know there is a people of this Led. Four founders had the insight to say, no, we're not going to bow down to you guys. You guys are, you guys come into our house. This is our place. You guys either got to do it our way or don't come back. We love people coming to Hawaii and having a good time, but we definitely don't like people moving here and then telling us how to live in our land. Well, the original Hui uh, really wasn't the Hui. It was, they dubbed themselves the Black Shorts. And protest this contest. And they had the police. You know, down there. I can remember that day because it came to that point and the energy or, you know, the, it was so high, it was so tense. We had to walk a tightrope uh, between accommodating them and keeping the contest alive. That's when the little head banging got to get started. Present members who value the Hui's traditions demand respect for the ocean of the island's environment, focused on the land and ocean, and for the Hawaiian culture and its traditions. Please join us for our annual Easter egg hunt and the 40th annual Independence Paddleboard Race on July 4th. <laughs>
beautiful view high up above both Volcom compounds. The studio for the Hui Backdoor Shootout 2019. It has been a great event. Kuiper Girl along with Rocky Cannon and Dr. Isaiah Walker. We had a great documentary, a short just snippet highlight from the Black Shorts documentary, the formation of the Huyo Inalu And uh, Dr. Walker, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, so I think the thing that stands out to me, of course, is uh, 1976. It, you have to contextualize what's going on in Hawaii at that time. 1976 is, is referred to as kind of the, this burgeoning time period of referred to as the Hawaiian Renaissance. And during that Renaissance time, you're, you're, you're coming out of this generation where in Duke's years, we talk about Duke a lot, <clears throat> you had the Hawaiian culture, but it was, it was kind of going on the downhill. 1976, we have the, the Hokulea, it sails to Tahiti for the first time. You also have eventually the Hawaiian language programs that emerge. Um, you have a lot of this sense of, of, of striving for an identity, a sense of identity, and a renewed sense of pride. And so with all those things going on, the, the hui is, is a part of that, is a, production, a product of that time period, of this feeling of the, the natives having that energy. And I, I liked how uh, David Stant mentioned that the energy was really high. <laughs> and for some people who got on the other end of that, uh, unfortunately, they, maybe the timing was really bad. Uh, not understanding that, that the Hawaiian movement at that time w had a lot of mana, a lot of energy, and a lot going on. So, so it's, it's kind of cool to see um, that this story is also a larger story of, of Hawaiian experience. Yeah, and that pride and that revival continues to, till today, 2019. And talking about 2019, I want to see some of the best waves of 2019 because some of the best waves of 2019 happened right here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Bruce Irons spit out of that pipeline wave. Bruce again. Bruce Hanaho, look at him. Looking like uh, one of those years he won the Pipe Masters or the Pipe Pro, just in great form. Love to see Bruce out here doing good, doing good. Shota Nakamura. Yeah, it was cool to see our team Japan did amazing out here at Pipeline, and they definitely earned Tyler their Newton earned their way here. Well, that guy had a host of good scores. We talked about him getting good waves in every round. It seemed like he found at least one or two gems in every heat. Yeah, we see him up on the top of the scoreboard with having three or four really good well, uh, scores. What about Jamie O'Brien right here and his performance at the Hui Backdoor Shootout? Lovely. He's a former champion here, knows what it takes to win. Yeah, Jamie with the blue suit, kicking out of that one. Seth Moniz put on quite a show and is going to make Hawaii proud on the championship tour. Yeah, he was a great addition and team member for Weed Maps. One of our great sponsors, Koa Rothman, with that 10-point ride today of all days with that Kona win sprinkle. No matter for Koa, he still get him. This is Keito this Matsuoka. Is the wave that's been shown around the world this week. 12-point ride. I'm calling it the wave of the winter so far. Yeah. And you literally called it. Super. <laughs> <laughs> but super exciting to be here to be able to witness this. So many days of incredible surf. Very blessed um, to have this window of, of, of so many powerful days of barrel riding. Yeah, I just want to uh, continue to uh, mahalo the Huyo Hi'enalu and awesome to see that uh, snippet of the historical references and how the Hui came about. And uh, look at that lovely shot right there. We talked about Ahupua from the mountain to the sea. Lovely scene looking down here at Ehukai Pipeline and uh, Rocky Point up in the distance I there. I can't get enough of this. This is oh, Keito Matsuoka's wave. Once again, look at that thing. 12-point ride, and I'm going to have to agree with Isaiah. Wave of the winter so far. Yeah, he's the front runner. I got to say, and I've got to believe that he'll be uh, in that conversation. And this sent shockwaves around not only the surfing world, but even people that are tuning in where there's no waves, they're still appreciating this in St. Louis, Missouri. You could fit a bus in that thing. Look at how <laughs> fat it is and his timing. He paddled so deep. He was way deeper than all the other competitors. So his positioning, timing, uh, 
this technical skill of, of picking the right line. And he, that, that fire hose that was <laughs> shot at him, he was able to stay on his board. We've seen in, in this event where some guys would ride the barrel but maybe get blown off at the end. So he was able to, to ride the full wave and kick out smoothly and do the double hand you raise. Know, it was a, a few seconds right there of just white out blizzard for him surfing blind literally through the exit of that wave because there was so much spit he was going by feel and he was feeling it really good keito matsuoka keito matsuoka the peaceful warrior he is humble he is ha ha ha, -ha but he is also a strong human being when it comes to having bravo bravado out there as well as technique at pipeline Arigato, Keito Matsuoka, for your performance. And also mahalo <laughs> to all of the competitors, all 32 of the competitors. And you know what? There's got to be a winner. It's been fun. There's been a lot of camaraderie. There's been a lot of barrels. But let's find out who's going to take out the 2019 Tahui Backdoor Shootout. Drum roll, please. And it is Whoa. Tyler Newton in first place, 11.5, 10.5, 9.83. That is Tyler Newton. Jamie O'Brien, second, Keito Matsuoka with his inspiring performance, number three, and Shota Nakamura, number four. So Japanese in the top four, 50% of the top four. Wow. And uh, Jamie O'Brien, a runner-up, and uh, great performance for Jamie. You see Bruce Irons at number five, also with Team Weed Maps. You see Kala Grace worked his way into the top six. Really cool dark horse charger, literally and figuratively. And um, great to see him in the top six. Seth Moniz got himself into that top seven. Guarantee with that backdoor wave from this morning. Also from Team Weed Maps. And now if you notice another a uh, bit of information on the graphic, look at the team represented three times in the top seven. Three times in the top seven? Oh, yeah. Weed, Weed maps. maps. Weed and that's maps. gonna lead to our team results. Drum roll, please. Winning team. Weed maps. So Weed Maps won. But Kaipo knows it. I know it already. <laughs> well, you already did the deduction on the leaderboard as well. North Shore Surf Shop in second place, Quicksilver finishing in third, and rounding up the top four, the Hui Wax in fourth place. So those are the results. We've had a wonderful time here, guys. Yes. And um, some of your final thoughts on this competition, Dr. Isaiah Walker. The surfing was incredible. The waves were amazing. Some of the best surf we've seen all winter. And to get five, six days of it, it's very cool. Very, it, was a, it was a privilege of me being here. And uh, hopefully, you're able to learn something about our kupunas and about Hawaii. And we're proud to bring it to you. Rocky. I, you know, I echo the same sentiments of the, the, the performances and the waves um, and appreciation for all of our viewers all over the world. I'm so, you know, amazed and honored to be here to bring this action to the world, to places uh, we would never imagine that would be watching and interested in surfing, but also really interested in our Hawaiian culture. So being able to bring that to you guys uh, live and direct all over the world and um, much appreciation, much mahalo. Thank you to the Huyo Heinalu, Weed Maps, and Freak Store. And uh, we're going to have our actual live presentation at Ehukai Beach Park at 12:30 today. You can catch some of that information at thehui.com if you want to catch up on all of the actual live presentation. Um, I want to mahalo everybody for watching. Enjoy these highlights. We had a great time. We're going to see you next year right here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Ahui ho.